The podcast on Haunted Hill will contain spoilers and swearing. I am the devil, and I am here to do the devil's work. I saw this light come. Be one of us. I didn't tell you my name. Hang up. I didn't tell them my name. Up. What are you doing? Oh, Gav. Hi, mate. I'm just, um, I couldn't sleep, so, you know, I, I took up this pottery, um, hobby recently, and I just thought, okay. I just thought I'd, you know, why are you humming that song, silly Billy? Oh, it's just Coming a song up. I was just thinking. What is it? Oh. Come and have a look at what I'm doing. I'm making, uh, uh, well, I don't know what I'm making yet, but have very, you ever, uh, So, what do you, can I, Get in, get in on this. Yeah, just sit here with me. Look, so oh, I'm going to have to sit around the back of you and probably put my arms right. around you. Is that okay? Get some of this clay. Look, oh. so basically, it's a bit wet, isn't it? Yeah, it's really, you've got to get it really wet. Can't you've got to push it in right in between those fingers, haven't you? Come here. There oh, you go. Oh, okay. Look. Oh, I suppose if we both hold uh, each other's hands. There we go. Oh. I'm going to guide. Let me guide you. Let me guide you. Hang on. Oh. So there we go. Look, so oh, what it's going down wrong. Oh, it's oh, oh, getting oh. floppy. Okay. Right, so you've got to be with a nice oh. firm grip when you do this, all right? Yeah. There we go. Oh, so, oh, oh, we go. oh, oh. I don't know what we're making here, but oh, it's very, very long, isn't it? Very long. It's got to be stiffer than this, though, Gav. Okay. But we need to put it in the oven, don't we, to get it stiffer, get it a bit warmer. Well, we want it to harden up if possible, yeah, but we'll do that a bit after. We want to, okay. you know, it's all about getting it nice and wet. And Oh God, we are very dirty. Look oh, at us. Filthy. I, I, I think I need to go and have a wash up. Come on, we're going to be recording in a minute. Let's go. Let's go shower. Hello and welcome to the podcast on Haunted Hill, episode eighty-six. My name's Gav Chuck Still. I'm sitting here with my friend Dan Bone. We are a podcast that talks about horror movies and sometimes other genre-type movies. Cult film, pop culture. Uh, I like superheroes, Star Wars, horror, vampires, and sometimes we make naughty sexual innuendo jokes, don't we? We do, we do, we do. Um, weird intro today on the episode, uh, because yeah, well, you know, keeping with that copyright I, rules. <laughs> don't put that intro out there, I don't want anyone to hear that. That was Oh, that was just our little private collection, wasn't it? Yeah, I hope you're not going to... Yeah. Um, it's our Valentine's special. We're a bit late. We are late, but better late than never. Exactly. We're always we're just we're, as long as we as long as we come, that's the main thing. When it comes to love, what I would say is <laughs> it's it's better to be perhaps a little bit later than to arrive a bit earlier. If you know what I'm saying. Is this episode just going to be full of innuendos? It is. Yeah, I'm glad we didn't come too early. We have arrived a bit later, but that's fine. It's fine. Please. So yes, Valentine's episode. We are delayed because again, life once again, life decided to jump in the way of us and, and block us a little bit, didn't it? A little bit, yes. Yeah. Just very quickly, uh, all that happened really, I say all, is that my darling wife Alice uh, ended up in hospital. Um, we went to Birmingham for one day, one night, in fact, and she ended up having to stay there for almost three weeks because um, her. She basically had to have her gallbladder removed because she we realised she had pancreatitis, and she was in incredible amount of pain. But she also got to take a lot of morphine and a lot of other um, prescribed co- uh, coke. I was going to say codeine and other stuff. So she was having a whale of a time on some other planet. Coke used so, to be yes. prescribed, didn't it? It did. Yeah, a bit of cocaine. Imagine that. Oh, doctor, I'm a little bit under the weather. What should I do? I'm feeling a bit down. All right, go and uh, just give this guy a call and uh, he'll come outside your house at about two in the morning and uh, you'll feel brilliant within about 10 minutes. <laughs> All right, thanks. Well, I will. <laughs> what, uh, um, I hope she's uh, better. She is on the road to recovery. She had to have keyhole surgery. They made four tiny holes in her, uh, one under her boob, one on either side of her belly and then, and they pump her full of air 
lift up her stomach because your gallbladder is behind it. Basically, she had loads of gallstones in her gallbladder. And then they take the whole gallbladder out. Uh, and then, they, do you know where they take it out? Now, you know I've got a phobia of belly buttons. They take it oh, out of your I, belly I, button. I don't like my belly button being touched. Yeah, they take it out of your belly button. So she's got a little scar on her belly button now, which is a bit gross for me at the moment. Um, but she keeps showing it to me again. Look at this, look! And she knows I hate belly buttons anyway. So a belly button with a scar on it is a bit like... Oh, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, but she's on the road to recovery. She's all good. She's got to slightly change her diet a little bit. Not so many rich foods and stuff, but you don't really need your gallbladder that much. It's more of a primitive organ. Talking of organs, let's talk about sex, baby, because it's the <laughs> Valentine's episode. We are doing two uh, romantic Valentine's inspired films, aren't we, Gav? Yes, these are your picks. I would never watch these unless I did a podcast with a man called Dan Bone. Here I am, Dan Bone. So we have chosen to review the classic 1990 movie, Ghost. I had seen once. The one that started it all. If it wasn't for Ghost and Pretty Woman, there would, would have never been the whole uh, romantic drama sort of, um, you know, movie genre thing that started in America in the early 90s and then came over here with Four Weddings and a Funeral and all of these movies. So these are, this is one of the ones that really started it all, made so much money. And it was the most rented film of uh, 1990 on VHS. Crazy. Uh, well, my mum used to own it on VHS. My, it's one of my mum's absolute favourite films, actually. She's Well, we've still got my mum's VHS up in the uh, what my dad calls the library room. still up there. Um, and we are also going to be watching Death Becomes Her. Hmm. I, I actually had seen this once as well, both of these. Yeah. Yes. Uh, horror comedy. Family horror, because it's not so gory. There are some good effects in it though it's groundbreaking actually for its time starring yeah. Goldie Horn, Meryl Streep and Mr Bruce Willis always lovely to have a bit of Bruce on the show indeed my opinions didn't change funny enough from when I was younger for both films funny enough oh so you still love them as much as you did them that's good to hear so we'll talk about those in a moment indeed. Scav what have you been up to mate nah. <laughs> sounded like a goat sounded like a goat <laughs> Um, I don't know, been doing stuff, working bits here and there. Um, I've got all the new camera gear I wanted to get now. Got uh, got a new lens the other day, recently, quite nice. Um, yeah, I, I've been just doing some bits and bobs. I hanged out with Sarah quite a lot. We do spend time watching movies, but I never... I should write down a list of the films I uh, watch. Cause she says she listens to the podcast, and you always go, what have you been watching? And I go... I don't know, some stuff, and she's like, we've been watching this and that and this. And so, <laughs> one movie I do remember, I watched, um, I'm just very quickly say, uh, The Dead Don't Die with Bill Murray. Yeah, so I talked about this uh, in the last episode very briefly, didn't I? I mentioned that I'd seen it. Mm. My opinion of it was that there were parts of it I liked, but overall it was trying to be too clever for its own good. What did you think of it? It felt like a, a horror movie for people who don't like horror movies. Oh, that's a very good description of it. Yeah, let's put Adams. Let's put Adam Driver and Bill Murray in it. Bill Murray, we know he's been in Ghostbusters and Zombieland. Well, it's because Jim Jarmusch, the director, had relationships with both of these guys and all of the people. Actually, if you go back through his career, like Iggy Pop being in it, he did a documentary of Iggy Pop. All of the people in it are just like you know, oh come on, make a zombie movie, it'd be fun, come on. But it, yeah, I think you're right. I think they're trying to be like super clever and it comes across as just... But it's like, who are you trying to play that to? Clever to the people who don't know horror movies? Because people who know horror movies are sitting there going, well, this is really flat and boring. We've seen so many better zombie films, even com comical zombie films, better than this. Shaun the Dead, like fucking 2004 was a million times better than this. What are you trying to be? What are you trying yeah. to do? What are you trying to say? And it's just like, I don't mind if you're just like a schlock zombie movie, but give us that. Don't give us this flat fucking bland was... movie which just goes on and on like to the point where it's like, this is now annoying me. I'm just wasting my life watching this. Like, like I say, I think there were a couple of scenes where it was talked about itself. It talked about itself as a film and I didn't, get that oh yeah they broke the full four at one point oh yeah. how do you know we, we, this ends badly oh well, i read the script oh well a couple of times actually there's like, another time what? where bill murray there's another time where bill murray says why is this song always on and and adam driver says oh this because it's it's one the, the main song on the film soundtrack oh i 
and you're like, that. what the, what yeah. the fuck? Like, uh, it's like, why, I don't why, know, why I don't do know. this? And it's, but like, if you watch Broken Flowers with Bill Murray, it's a, it's a very slow sort of movie, like like this in a way. But it's like, if you be slow, then be slow, it's cool. But there's just stuff in there which is just not likeable. And it's such a waste of actors and resources. They could have made such a great film. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't. I didn't get it. I'll be honest with you. I didn't get who they were aiming that well, film it, at. It flopped as well, so yeah. nobody went to see it. Well, I watched the zombie movie. Um, finally, got round to watching Zombieland: The Double Tap, um, and I watched that with my dad and my brother. We had a bit of a blokey night. Did you enjoy? We, it? We, yes, we loved it. We got all the donuts in and popcorn and sugar, so it probably helped that we had loads of sugar in our coursing through our veins. But we actually really enjoyed it and. I cannot remember the last time I saw the original, and I know I really enjoyed it. Um, so I was a bit apprehensive, like oh, it felt like that was a bit of a one-off. But this was was a lot of fun, actually. Have you seen the second one? No. Oh yeah, I really enjoyed it. It's um, my dad actually said he thought it was as good, if not slightly better. But I think that's just because it's newer. I I think it's, you know, I'd have to rewatch the first one again. But I really enjoyed it. There were some really good effects in it. And again, it's less about the zombies, more about the characters. What's interesting is it's set in a world where the zombie apocalypse happened in 2009. Therefore, we don't have any, in, in that world, they don't have anything past 2009. So there's no such thing as Uber. You know, there's certain websites that didn't aren't existing, dating apps, that kind of stuff. So it's quite interesting that they mention that here and there. Willie Harrelson, as always, is fantastic. Um, and there's a few other people in it. And at one point, they're driving around in a great big Bigfoot truck with the giant wheels flattening zombies. Always fun. That's so, kind of fun. Yeah. I did, unfortunately, then watch a film that I know you've seen. And I think, um, unless you're a Rob Zombie fan, which, you know, people are, and I know you are, in fact, but I watched Three from Hell. And uh, yeah, I pre ordered it, and uh, Sarah and I watched it. Um, dying to watch it when I finally got it, and uh, it's just like, I, I'll just quickly tell you what I think, then obviously you can just discuss it. Yeah, of course, it. no, please do. Um, uh, it was just like having there's two or three scenes which are kind of like yeah, that's pretty cool it visually looks cool I like what's going on here a couple of things here and there like and that was it, it was, and the rest of it's just like this just could be a movie of them any day every any day just pick up and they're just eh, and there's no beginning there's no middle and no end there's just nothing here it's just like let's just do it again so I understand if Rob Zombie wanted to make it for himself as a movie just to get those characters back and try and do it again it's nice for Sid Haig to reprise that before he died so it's nice for those guys to make it. I don't think it's nice for us guys that they made it because no. there's just no point. What's your thought, Force? Similar, really. I thought it was um, some of the worst acting I've seen in a long time on a film with a budget, you know. And I thought um, the the characters were. It's not often I watch a film and I and I'm actually the characters disgust me a bit. Uh, and and that was part of it was the writing and I didn't like the, the, the some of the things that were happening in it in fact because there wasn't a point to it it was just they were being horrible for the it's, sake of it's it it's such a shame because Rob Zombie can bring out a film which looks like a certain style and it's super cool the characters the costumes the soundtrack the colour the editing just everything about it produced wise is great apart from his scripts he, I really felt like it's he's like, sucking his why, own dick in this film. Why, why can't he just work? I know he was going to try with Brett Easton Ellis trying to do a series TV show on Charlie Manson, but that got dropped, and that would have been good with Brett Easton Ellis writing it and, and Rob Zombie directing. Okay, cool, that might have actually worked. But this, but it's just like, just work with another writer. Just get someone to come in and say, no, this stop doing this bullshit. Fucking do I this know. because you can make a good movie. It's like it's like a naughty, he's like a naughty school child. Why? We just won't fucking do what he's supposed to be doing. He's just. I, I, just, I know there are a lot of people you know. out there. There are Rob Zombie fans. You know, I know um, some of our listeners, particularly. I think Dean Martin, you're a big a Rob Zombie fan, and there's a lot of you guys out there, and, and that's fine. I, 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 I love, love his Robbie music. Yeah. But for me, unfortunately, he's a one-trick pony. Uh, <clears throat> I really love House of a Thousand Corpses. It is one of my favourites. You know. Um, and I like, I really like Lords of Salem, actually. That's probably my second favourite of his. And I kind of like Devil's Reject, but it's a bit, I can take it or leave it. But for me, he's never really, he's been trying to remake those films over and over again. Well, particularly the, the movies, you know, with the Firefly family. He's been trying to just remake that over and over again, or, or even remake, you know, the Texas Chainsaw style movies that were out in the 70s and 80s. And I don't know, man, if he, if he put his hand, like when he tried something new with Lords of Salem, 
it worked, man. It worked really well. Um, and I'd love him to try something different again. Mm. Um, but he just keep, keeps using the same, and I use the term very loosely, actors, because, my God, Sherry Moon Zombie was terrible in Three From Hell. Uh, her, 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 yeah, her performances seem to have started getting a bit worse, but I think it's because, I don't know if the energy, the the... the the want the passion to do that stuff is going to excel in people even if their qualities of an actor are not as good they 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 want to do it is going to possibly push their performances a little bit better but like maybe they're just been doing it for so long now so oh, let's just make another movie okay well, cool you it's, get lazy why if you're are working, they doing it then why bother you're working for your husband for the sake for the last 15 years you know and and you need a new eye to tell you. Oh, you need Something to step different. it up a bit. Yeah, yeah, it's just like, yeah. Because well, like he needs new actors to, to direct. He needs a producer who's needs... going to tell him to what to do properly and do things yeah. properly and say to him, "No, you're not doing that. No, you're not doing that." But he want, he's doing what he wants to do. So fair play to him in that. But it gets to the point where it's like, well, should, should I bother with the next film he makes? So I, I even I mean, I, I will. I, I will check out anything else he does. That's it. We're but... always going to do that, and I think <laughs> he knows me, that. He's, got... he's, a, he's a creative person that's just constantly making, and he's managed to become a director and a musician successfully absolutely you he's doing stuff that any of us would love to be doing and i do like rob zombie and i do like the stuff he does but i just but can't just recommend what, the last it's couple because of movies, it's because us as fans we know that he can do better and we just want <laughs> we him do. to do better and say please just make that movie we go thank you that's Aww. you know we just want the best for him. Well, I watched another movie which really surprised me. This is the last one now um, that I, I really to talk about. But really surprised me because I, I didn't really know what I was going to get from it. I thought it was going to be really... I knew it was going to be weird, but I thought it was going to be terrible. And I ended up watching the Banana Splits movie and actually ended up really enjoying it. Uh, have you seen it? I've got a DVD upstairs. Sarah gave me because she thought it was shit. Um, she gave it to me to let uh, Jay watch it. I don't know if it was the mood I was in, or but it really surprised me, and it was really gory. I think it was 99% practical effects, from what I can remember. Um, I love the banana splits. They're pretty trippy anyway, but to throw them into this kind of weird slasher, almost a bit supernatural, it's like, what the fuck, man? It was... And, and those masks, when you think of them, they're, they're kind of big, smiley, goofy, but when they're put in the right framing in a dark corridor with one of them at the stood at the end staring at you silently man it kind of works it made me start okay. thinking about um some of the other characters from our childhood that would perhaps work do you know what i mean like i i can't think of enough i, I never of i never saw the original movie program whatever it was so i don't know did you not see the one banana two banana three banana no four? i don't know what everyone kept saying to me about it when it first came out and i was like i don't know what this is i don't know what you're all on about uh well i mean if you don't really know the program it doesn't. I don't think it really matters. Well, I'm going to watch it, Jay. Is it acceptable for her? Um, mm -hmm. it, does it say there's words of rape or is anything mentally there's abusive? No, or... of, there's no. I don't think there's any just, sexual is violence. Just, just be, it's just be violence, movie gore. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's fine because she understands it's all. It's not real, and she yeah. her mum swears enough. So there I watched go. also the Invisible Man. I went to the cinema. Ah, no, Gav. I heard a lot of people couldn't see it. Yeah, it's, couldn't see it. Couldn't find him. Find it anywhere. Hey. Boom. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, okay, great. So I'm excited because I, I didn't, I had no interest in this at all. I had no interest. And then a few people are like saying it's actually all right. So tell me what you thought. I had no interest in watching it. Then Sarah and I were just like, oh, we haven't been to the cinema. Because we for watched a while. the trailer together, didn't we? You were at mine, and we watched it. And we were both like, meh. Yeah, I was, I was definitely like, yeah, don't care. Uh, to be honest, the lead woman, I have no interest in looking at her. And that's not that's not like this for any particular reason. I just didn't like her, um, yeah, didn't so like I didn't care about her. I had no care about her for no no particular reason. There was no literally no reason for that. I just didn't like her. I don't know why. Yeah. Um, uh, so I had that going on, but that's just obviously that's just my opinion, and no one else's. Um, uh, yeah, I wasn't going to go along. Sarah and I like oh, we haven't been to cinema for a while. Let's have a little look. Nice, let's go out on a little cinema date. Yeah, bring. So we went and did that, and it, yeah, it's good. It's Lee Winnell uh, directed it, who uh, was in the first Saw movie, who did mm -hmm. that with um, oh uh, James Wan, 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 James Wan, Wan, Wan or Wan, 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 Wan or Wan. 
one on one. You say you say tomato, I say tomato. Um, and uh, yeah, he's gone on to uh, make do other stuff in the horror world, and so he's been around for a while. And he, after this, on the back of this, he's secured a two or three picture deal with Blumhouse, who Back are now Blumhouse. doing stuff. Uh, are now doing stuff with uh, Universal. So yes. obviously they're doing a, this... a Frankenstein movie. They're doing a... oh yeah, they start doing it all now because uh, they're doing a couple of movies now. They've started putting directors to well, yeah, movies. but House of they've pushed themselves up a little bit more. Well, obviously for a while now, and I like, it's fine. But I look, I did look at Jason Blum on IMDb the other day. He has fifty-seven movies on the uh, upcoming coming up from him. Fuck it, hell. he's producing fifty-seven. It's just like, do we need that many? I don't know. I mean, I've got. I, I don't like it's, it's good for a good it's occasionally, good, but. It, yeah, occasionally that's unfortunate it's good for filmmakers who can now go out there and get all these films made who you'd never see because of the Blumhouse the filming model that they go for and they're making um, um, unfortunately I do feel like the, the, some of the quality is starting to slip a little bit uh, due to quantity were the Happy Death Day movies Blumhouse yeah yeah, I like those. Those were good. Blumhouse, um, you generally with Blumhouse you generally find movies with one title who have a really good premise yeah, occasion. I, I probably like every. I, I, actually, I'm sitting here sort of being a bit mean. I actually probably like every other Blue Mouse movie. Yeah, I'd say it's probably um, every other, or maybe maybe a little bit less than that. But yeah, yeah it's it's a shame. But you do get some good ones. But yeah, Invisible Man. Let's get back to that very quickly. It's from a female perspective of. I won't go into spoilers. A female perspective of the, a woman who's been abused by. Um, a scientist person who inevitably becomes the Invisible Man and um, she gets away from him one night and then obviously he comes back into life and people think she's a bit crazy for saying that there's this her uh, ex is here because apparently he died ex is here or he died ex is here and uh, he's attacking me but he's invisible they're just like you're insane um, so okay. from that side of it that perspective it's very good because especially in this climate of where we are in life where uh, any colour any race any sex whatever shouldn't be actually a factor it shouldn't even be a discussion so it's quite nice to just drop this in and we go into a story about a woman's perspective and it's about a woman being abused which is well, for, ironically, I'm writing a script at the moment, um, which is about women being abused. So for, so for interest's sakes, it was interesting for me to um, go that way and see, watch the movie. And it, it, it plays out quite well in that in those terms. It, it's it's very genuine. Um, yeah, it's good. It, it's it's fairly good writing. It didn't need to be an hour and 45 or an hour 50, whatever. It should be just be, it should just be a plain 90 minutes. Um, it's good. I've heard it. I've heard it takes itself a bit too seriously at times. I didn't really think so. Okay, somebody I know said they thought it took they took itself a bit too seriously, and he said if I wanted to see, he said I felt like I just wanted to go home and watch Hollow Man. <laughs> it did. Uh, yeah, I do like Hollow Man actually. I like enough. Hollow Man. Um, and we, did, we talked about that a little bit before the movie started, but no, it's it's a worthwhile watch. I don't think it should be hour and forty five minutes. Um, but it's a worthwhile watch. I, if you're a horror fan, I think you should watch it. It's more thriller than horror, though. You're not, you know, the horror element is what I guess a horror element. If you really look at it, is actual abuse. When it comes yeah. down to the, uh, the Invisible Man itself, the, the, the original black and white film is quite a gnarly film. The way he kills people, and stuff. And it's quite like, whoa. And this does have that, but it's more thriller, I'd say, than a horror. You know, but worth a watch. Uh... You, you can't not not come away from the movie and think it's shit so it's a nice little twist here and there so you know I'm a big 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 fan of the Invisible Man movies I used to love the TV show remember the TV show that used to be on no um, but the guy I think it was the guy from Man From Uncle was in it it was kind of like the Incredible Hulk that kind of thing where he's on the run and he had to hide and every week you know he would do another mission that kind of thing hmm. um, it was really good uh, yeah I'm, I will check it out I do. based on what you and Sarah have said yeah I'd say it's also in the vein of a sort of more of a Hitchcock type film not and I'm not in any way saying <laughs> that comparing it to a Hitchcock film um, it's in that way inclined I'd say in that way in the thriller and being a bit more of a slow burn a bit more of a drama you know and character driven I'll check it out. Indeed. Can we get onto this episode before people we get can. bored and turn yeah. us off? Because we want to well, keep them turned on. Because it is our Valentine's Ooh. special. Um, but before um, we before we take a little break then and start chatting about Patrick Swayze, Patrick Swayze. Um, we, I just wanted to mention, and I know we don't often like to uh, sort of mention things that are happening right now in the media, but some good news. Uh, talking of monsters and abuse, um, the... 
the dark monster Harvey Wankstein has been given 23 years in uh, prison. Yay! We wanted this. We've been this is we don't brilliant. have to talk about him anymore. No, this is fantastic. Yeah, We've mentioned it every episode, just not that we have, have any power at all, but, you know, it's it, we were worried that he would vanish into the... I, I really thought he was going to become the Invisible Man. Yeah, but, no, he... He's had quite a few court appearances where he looks more and more decrepit each time. It's all a fucking act. He had heart um, surgery recently and they were sort of trying to, oh, can he just get a really short sentence? No, he fucking can. He's been given 23 years. Good. Fucking rot. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, um, indeed. I don't know yeah. how much of that he will do. Uh, not no, not from know. his health. I mean, in actually how much he gets out from good behaviour. Well, I think it's a combination of his health and <clears throat> get, getting out of it. But either way, he... Everyone knows his face. And what what you need to do is him get coronavirus in prison. That's what you need to get. <laughs> Ooh. There we go. But anyway, so go. anyway, he was a cunt, and <laughs> Fucking hell. he should go down, and he did. So I'm really happy that actually that happened. And he didn't, and somehow, do you know what I was expecting? Literally just expecting was it to be like, oh, no, he got away on doing some community service and staying in his house yeah. for five years and paying loads of money because somewhere along the lines, he, some powerful way of money got involved. The but, problem no, is, but no, there's, no, there's no, there's no smoke without fire, and when probably around a hundred women, if not more. Oh God, yes. Come and, that's, forward. and if if they if he hadn't, oh, do you, what I'd, I'd hate to know what'd go on. There'd be fucking rallies all over cities around the world. Probably it'd just be like you can't not in 2020. You well, can't. this has changed the uh, the whole. Me oh, too it, do, you, do you know how good it, it is brilliant. though? This will possibly stop people in the workplace saying to them, "Give us a blow and I'll give you a job." You know. Yep. This hopefully will make them at least have a second thought and go, oh, best not be a prick and do that. You know? Uh, yeah, there was something with Roman Polanski recently. women as well, because well, I'm sure women there? do this as well to guys. Yep. But there more, was something with Polanski men. recently as well, wasn't there, where he was at, uh, he was, his, one of his films won an award and a load of women walked out. And it's, you know, why is he still getting work? It He's is really, it is, it is, it is quite weird, the whole Polanski thing. It is very strange it is really weird because it's like you did you did have sex with someone underage so you know you know that's not cool Uh, don't know there we go anyway on this lovely sexy note let's get off this and uh, get back to what episode we're going to do we're going to do we're going to do ghost Gav okay let's ghost it up baby oh yeah Hey, Paul, what I was thinking is that we need to cut a promo. Yeah, I've been working on some ideas. It's just I don't really know where to go with it exactly. What if I got like a filter where we could just kind of talk normally and we can have kind of a script, but then I can I can like filter it so that one of us will have one kind of voice and then one will have the other. I want to put my request. Make me as Freddy Krueger. Can you do that? Maybe instead of the voices, what if we tried to like write a skit, develop a whole thing, and we have a backstory? And but well, I don't know. That might be kind of too long. So well, like screeching cars and explosions and fireworks and yeah, and, yeah. Well, what about I ins- like it. Maybe instead of you know doing a filter, we could just like reach out to Robert England himself and maybe. Ooh he can you know just record a promo for us sometime do you think i, I mean we I, might have to like raise some money we can do a kickstarter and we could just throw it out to like robert england and you know sure, just, sure. just all kinds of actors and and i think people will do that i think sure why not well you know what? i don't know maybe we're overthinking this whole thing how about if we just tell people where to find us i like that you can find us at who will survive on iTunes, Stitcher, on the Legion Podcast Network, and on the Raw Live and Unedited Podcasting Network. Also on Facebook and Instagram under the same name. Oh, wait. Can we do it underwater uh, with that, piranhas killing me? That would kind of be brutal. And if that doesn't work, then you can do the regular promo. All right. Well, just get in the water and I'll go get some fish. All right, cool. good in my life happens I'm just afraid I'm gonna lose it I really love you what do you want somebody 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 help us 
What's happening? It's like I think about you every minute. It's like I can still feel you. The problem with you is you still think you're real. It's all up here now. You want to move something, you got to move it with your mind. <laughs> Molly, why can't you hear me? Oh, who is that? You can hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, Sam Wheat. Please. Say my name. Say it. Leave me alone. Say my name. Stop Stop it. Say it. Stop Stop it. Hello? I get a message from Sam. What? Sam Wheat? He asked me to call. Once you go to police, he said it was a setup. He was murdered. She said Sam knew who killed him. Are you out of your mind? I mean, what are you going to tell the police? She knew things, private things. I know about the green underwear that you wrote your name on. Well, this psychic woman's got a record that goes back a long way. Don't you see? I'm not a fake. I don't know what's real anymore. Don't open him. Don't open the damn door. He's a murderer. Why are you doing this to me? Do you hear me? Why are you doing this to me? Sam's dead. Tell her I love her. He says he loves you. Sam would never say that. You gotta take all your anger, all your love, all your hate, and then let it explode. Molly? Molly, you in danger, girl. So, first film of our sexy 2020 Valentine's episode is Ghost from 1990. After a young man is murdered, his spirit stays behind to warn his lover of impending danger with the help of a reluctant psychic. Yep. That synopsis is, if you were to say that to somebody, that was that's never a film that you sounded like we would talk about on this podcast, is it? No, no. Apart from really. the fact there's a spirit in there. And that's it. It's a ghost movie. So here we go. It's a ghost 1990 <laughs> directed by Jerry Zucker, who directed, uh, strangely, he's one of the Zucker brothers who directed Top Secret Police Squad Airplane. Um, very, very strange for him to sort of move and do this romantic drama, drama sort of and they, movie, isn't it? Yeah, 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 totally. Yeah. Okay, no, Karen. Uh, yeah, uh, it stars Patrick Swayze uh, and, yeah, and Demi uh, Moore, which at the time were big hot commodities. Which is funny because we're talking about the the woman's husband at the time in his next in the next movie, which is quite funny. Indeed, Bruce Willis. Yeah, and actually, Bruce Willis was asked to be in this movie. There was quite a few blokes, that, which we'll touch on later on. Who were you're going to touch on well, some men later? I'm going to touch touch Bruce Willis later on. Brilliant. Um, and it, what's equally what's as sad now is that Patrick Swayze is indeed obviously passed on. So. Um, I love Patrick Swayze, and I think a lot of people he was, do. He was a funny character because he was kind of like on borderline of I'm not going to like him because from when I when I was watching his films, I was a teenage boy, or whatever. I, on the borderline of I'm not going to watch this dude because women like him and he does dirty dancing, and I'm just there's literally zero interest. Then he would go and do like Roadhouse and yeah. rip, rip a man's throat out with yeah. his bare hands and you go oh, 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 yeah, you know he's one of those mind. blokes when you're a teenager you definitely were like oh that Patrick Swayze seems like a dick but only because you were jealous that he could dance like an absolute god and do martial arts at no point get, did I and, did I ever watch Dirty Dancing or did I ever think that man can dance like a god I mean uh, <laughs> that's I'm not, your I'm that's tell you right you. now he can dance like a god trust me I'm sure he can but at no point did I ever want to dance like a god or if there's such a thing uh, or Patrick Swayze is I suppose um, but it's funny that you thought that the time of my life Ooh, um, never felt so, the... yeah, so in this Patrick movie Patrick Swayze Demi Moore yeah he needs love with Demi Moore who happens to be an artist doesn't she she is. What does he do? She is. What does he do? Uh, he he works for like Wall Street, doesn't he? He's a wanker, a banker. Yeah. So uh, the movie is there are very very light horror elements throughout the movie. Everybody knows Ghost, as I've said, I touched on it. It is one of those big '90s sort of what I would call like a housewife movie. I know it's terrible to say, but you, people say like the housewife's choice when it comes to sort of artists like Michael Bolton and that. And this is one of those kind of your mum loved this movie. Yeah, I don't um, understand why, but it was. I remember it being 
before we had the Facebook, the Facebook, and the Twitter, and the social media, and where, where, in the sense how it was, we had people just talking to each other when they met each other. Have you seen that movie? This movie, and I remember my mum and all her friends going on and on about this. And it was it because it's had a little naughty sex moment in it? Is that the reason, or you know, what, I think it was. The reason? It was. It's it, slightly spiritual. My mum thinks my mum believes in God and all that jazz. So, and I think also it was actually. I, I still get a bit teary at the end as well. Uh, oh so my I think God. it is quite sad as well. But also, it had Whoopi Goldberg in it, who is probably never been funnier, in my opinion. She's really funny in this movie. Um, we'll get onto her character in a moment. What I think a name, it just, though, Whoopi. It's a shame. That, it's a shame that it's also a Whoopi cushion. But that, that's what she's named after. Honestly, that's not her real name. Her, um, I'll just tell you her real name now. But she was named after, apparently, she said she used to get really windy before she'd go on stage and do comedy to the point that she she got nicknamed Whoopi Cushion. Uh, well, like Whoopi, because she was always farting. Um, hang on, I'll just look her up now. Find out her real name. Give me just a moment. Yeah, she was born Karen. Oh, Karen Elaine Johnson, known professionally as Whoopi Goldberg. That's so funny. Yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, Whoopi, farty. Farty Goldberg. Donald Trump. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I always think it's funny he's named after a fart. You just heard me slurp on a coffee then as well. Um, yeah, so, they, so this is what's going on in this movie. You've got these two people they're in love with each other. They are they're so kind of young, it. hipstery, kind of cool type people. Um... Uh, a good-looking couple, and... Uh, but there's this... This, what about Carl? There's still about Carl, because Carl's always there, isn't he? Is that the mate? So there's a third wheel in the mix, Carl. He's always there. Everywhere, the, everything they do, he's there doing it with them. So they buy a new apartment... And well, they not, sort of... not everything, but yes. Well, uh, so they start re- re- renovating this apartment, and, you know, it, it couldn't, they couldn't be happy. It's kind of like The Crow. You get that... Like in the crow, how they make out Brandon and his wife to be um, like the perfect couple, so in love, and they were taken from each other, you know. And it's kind of the same with this. They really want the audience to feel the love here. And yeah, you know, he, he gives, he finds a penny when they're demolishing the wall. He gives her a penny and says, you know, I love you, Molly. I'll love you forever. It's very cheesy, but I'm on board. I'm gonna say straight away, I am on board. I love a bit of cheese got to be honest with you i know you do um i struggled to watch this movie well, no i didn't i struggled to watch the the next movie more um <clears throat> it was all right there's some we, funny elements in this I, that... now i did watch this with my eldest do- daughter jasmine who likes to be known as jay now it's kind of like formerly known as prince um <laughs> she uh she is 13 in about a month and a half so she'll soon be a teenager but me and her are watching I'm introducing her to lots of like 15 horror movies now because I, I she I can it's really I think it should be judgment on a parent what uh, <clears throat> the child can watch at what age and stuff and she's she does special effects she's very aware of what is real and what isn't real and what's acceptable in society and what isn't acceptable so <clears throat> I have no qualm in letting her see some things anyway we watched this movie and this was and I knew straight away getting in to watch this movie that was the sexy scene at the beginning and I was like this is going to be my first time with my daughter watching something of such nature yeah and I sat there waiting and as I slowly watched her and was watching it I took some photos of her and I put them on the Facebook page it was hilarious I actually got a little review from her which will be tapped onto the end of this review of what she thinks of it and it was hilarious it was a very funny moment where we both kind of cringing but wetting ourselves at the same time so it was kind I, of alright and I don't actually think it's that sexy it a scene, isn't really. I thought it was more than it was but I, I saw yeah. this when it first but came out but I think out. at the time because of the clay yeah. uh, we'll, we'll come on to that now then so just very quickly then just to set things up we've got Sam and Molly very very much in love we've got Carl who works with Sam um, and um, they work together on Wall Street Molly's an artist and there's this huge love between them so we know we know that's going on that's fine and they're all very good friends there is a very good moment in the lift where carl and sam get in the lift at work uh do you remember the scene and um carl says to sam oh have you been did you go to the doctor and then he said yeah i'm uh really 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 contagious and i shouldn't even be anywhere near people really to be honest with you <coughs> so it's coughing you wouldn't want to do you wouldn't want to say this nowadays in a lift oh god no you wouldn't no. but um they have this really funny joke where they just freak everybody out in the lift and it, there's some good chemistry there i thought that was really funny there's also some really good chemistry between patrick swayze and Whoopi goldberg later on and that's because 
Patrick Swayze wouldn't make this film unless they cast his friend Whoopi in it. Uh, so he didn't sign on until they'd said, all right, we've got Whoopi Goldberg. She will be in this then 100% as a psychic. That's when he said, all right, great, I'm on board then. Because they were very good friends. So that's why that's they've got so very good funny. chemistry. That's so funny. didn't know. Okay. All right. Yeah. So they've got really good chemistry in yeah, the, the, the scene this, later on. This movie, you know, to, to be fair to this film, I, I when you said about the movie's done, I was a bit like, oh, fucking hell. This film itself, apart from that cheese factor side I'm a bit like oh it's a bit too pop it's a bit too like oh um it's made very well it's acted very well it's a really it is a good story it is a great idea um not it's just not something for me nowadays but I really did appreciate performance and stuff and you know, it flowed very well as a movie out. yeah 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 it's a very much a 90s film oh yeah god yeah and it is in those senses it's a good film i just i i, I don't think i can personally re- i could i can i can recommend it but do you not know I mean it is well made movie um, demi moore talking of acting demi moore was cast because she's got a crazy ability to be able to cry out of either eye on command wow uh, I wonder what Swayze, else she can do. They didn't want him initially, Patrick Swayze, because they thought he was too much of a tough guy after Roadhouse. They were like, mm, yeah, we don't think you'll, you'll be good in this. And then they brought him in and he did the scene towards the end where he cries and he made everybody in the in the audition cry. And they said to him afterwards, like, what the hell? How did you channel that? And he said, my dad died six months ago. And I just thought what it would be like to be able to see him one last time in heaven. And they were like, you have got this job, my friend. You have got this job. <laughs> so, you know, they're good. really good, good. artists, crafts, craftsmen in this, you know. Um, yeah, good. At, and that's why the acting is good. And well, Buffy Goldberg's a great actor. She won a bloody Oscar for this film. I didn't know. Isn't that, that crazy? This film won two Oscars, in fact. Okay. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, it, it is a, a very liked film. Um, and like you said, it is well made. You can you can feel that. And yes, it hasn't aged well with regards to the cheese. But then cheese is there. You know what you're getting with cheese. So let's go to the scene that you're talking about, Gav. We get the very famous pottery scene. That bloody song by the um, the Righteous Brothers, Unchained Melody. That became then a number one in the charts that in England. That got released, didn't, didn't it? it? Yeah, of God, it was it all does. over the charts. Um, and that and, would have helped this movie's popularity And you as well. only associate that song with this film now and that that is a very you don't get that anymore no you so don't the, no. The 80s we're different and the times 90s, now my friend different times in the 80s and the 90s they really were well, they wanted you to invest in the film because they wanted you to buy the soundtrack because this soundtrack to this movie went on to do really really well obviously you know they wanted you to buy the soundtrack they wanted you to watch the film to rent the film and then eventually buy the film it was like the whole package don't do that anymore do they they just don't do it no, no, different world. The funny thing is nowadays, you can't get the soundtracks and stuff. It's not really advertised as much. But what you oh. can do is you can get, like, some of the cult movies we like, you can get these incredible records, vinyl releases. Yeah, God, with these, yeah. Which are just like, all, all coloured vinyl with pictures, brand new sleeves, new artwork, which and they all go for, like, 50 quid a pop or whatever. It's, like, fucking ridiculous. But yeah, that's crazy. what you, it's just such a weird, different place now. But, yeah. I was watching, I was sat with my dad the other day having a coffee, just chatting, and the radio was on in the background. The actual radio, you know, we didn't have any music on that we'd chosen. And the Ghostbusters just came on, Ray Parker Jr. Yeah, that's good. And I was like, what the hell? Like, and I said to my dad, this is such a good song, though. It's such a well made song. And every, I'm like, it's genius, really, because how better way to sell a movie than have them just chanting the name of the movie all the way through the song? It's pretty crazy. But yeah, it's a different time, like you say. So, Black Bloody Song. So, Pottery. Do you want to talk about this scene, Gav? What are your thoughts and feelings on this scene? You can listen to what uh, Jay and I think at the end of the, this review, if you like. <laughs> It was very, um, probably a bit too sexy at the time. Um, you know, she's doing, Molly's doing some pottery. Sam comes downstairs. They get all all dirty and wet and covered in clay. And then it culminates in this very 90s sex scene. But it's just been hyped up so much that you expect to see full frontal nudity penetration. But You it's expect, because just... it's so built up in my mind, I expect to see anal, you know. It's... <laughs> It was that. Oh, it was that. Speci- it was that rude in my mind. I was just like, oh, I can't go. I believe I'm going to watch this with my daughter. And it came on. And just, we just Moore laughed. Just, Demi Moore just shoving loads of clay up Patrick Swayze's bum. Exactly. That's what I again. assumed it was. Oh my darling! <laughs> Stuff <laughs> the clay in. 
Yeah, that doesn't happen. But they do make love because, you know, they don't have sex. They make love for sure. Yep. So, uh, yeah, there is a scene where she says, <laughs> you got to get it nice and wet. <laughs> and oh. It's like, fucking hell. Come on, Demi Moore. We know what you're saying. Um, so uh, back to this, the plot. So at work, Sam's at work. This is Patrick Swayze. And he finds that there's too much money in one of the accounts that he's working on. He can't quite understand it. Um, that will come back into play a bit later on. So Molly and Sam go off to watch Macbeth. Um, a charmed life by uh, who led a charmed life sorry and they uh, they talk about marriage Sam will never ever ever say something will he Gav what will Sam never ever say don't know brilliant so she always says I love you and much like Han Solo he doesn't say I love you back he says ditto he never says it why I don't know and she says why don't you ever say it he says because everyone says it it doesn't mean anything when people say it but you know I love you. I, I love you. I think about you all the time. Da, da, da. It's just like a bit of a weird thing, but it comes into play later that, on. That's, that's, I'd be not very happy with that, to be honest with you. <laughs> I'd be like, fucking say it. <laughs> You'd dump Patrick, would you, if you didn't say it? Yeah, say that shit, bitch. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Um, so, while they walking along and talking, Willie Lopez, the baddie, pulls a gun on them. Willie pulls Willie. Willie Lopez. And he's... Uh, He's quite often apparently confused with um, what's He's the guy. In loads of, he was in quite a few movies. You'd always see him in eighties and nineties films. Well, he was in the Cannibal Run. Oh, nice. Yeah, he was one of the guys in the Cannibal Run. But he gets quite often confused with I can't remember the name of that Mexican actor now. The guy that's in um, uh, a few uh, Wes Anderson movies. But they've been confused with each other over time apparently. But they're not the same person. Uh, yeah, so he pulls a gun and there's a bit of a scuffle and there's a gunshot and then Willie Lopez runs off and this is done really well to me so Willie Lopez runs off and then Patrick Swayze chases after him like yeah get out of here you son of a gun and then he comes back and to check Molly's alright and then sees that Molly is lying on the ground with his body crying so yeah he's been shot and he is bleeding out on the ground and um, this is a really interesting and almost quite, probably quite original it may have been done since but it's quite a good way of seeing your own death isn't it don't you think mm-hmm. um it's he... quite interesting I, this is an interesting part of the film the fact that the the, the hook of this movie is the fact that he's going to be a ghost and see his his death and stuff and then he becomes like on earth and he can't <laughs> leave in purgatory or so continue sorry and how funny as well going back to something i touched on earlier that bruce willis was offered this role and turned it down because one of his reasons was i don't want to play a movie where i'm killed at the beginning and i don't think people would want to go and see me as a ghost and then he went on to make the sixth sense many years later but uh you don't know he's a ghost in the sixth sense until the end oh have i ruined it ah, i just bought that copy so for that the other day and i took it around my mum's house so check this out you should watch this so have they watched it yet i don't know oh Yes, so Sam is dead. He's a ghost, and he now he gets to experience what it's like. He basically um, hears them trying to resuscitate him, and eventually figures out there are other ghosts around. He cannot communicate with Molly. He tries. He can't even touch her. Um, he goes to his own funeral, <clears throat> and this is where he sees lots more ghosts. An old man at the, the hospital comes up to him, and he says. Hey, son. Oh, you were so young. It's a shame that you're, you're dead. And he says, who are you? And he says, oh, I'm just waiting for my wife. She's in there. And there you, you see them trying to resuscitate his wife. Um, and yeah, they're both older. it's a bit like the Frighteners, this, isn't it? It is, actually, yeah. Hmm. Um, you know, there's this whole other world of ghosts and rules and, uh, you know, and, and he's now, as as the viewer through Sam, we're now watching him try and to- figure out. Well, trying to navigate himself through this uh, purgatory world of not being like go through doors and things. Now, it's funny you say he run the role for his performance uh, in the uh, uh, the uh, audition for that that scene that you said because yeah. his acting when he's going trying to get through a door or pick something up or stuff like that is fucking terrible. Why? Why do you think that? Because well, well, you can see his performance. His acting is awful when Patrick Spacey's like go for the door he goes just like this the face he pulls it's just like what are you doing? It took I'll be honest it with you. threw me out of it because his acting was so bad at those points. I'll be honest with you I love Patrick Spacey yeah? and I think he's a very charismatic or was a very charismatic guy and 
very likable but i gotta be honest i don't think he was the best actor it was it, it was terrible go back and watch it like the first time he tries to go through a door and look at his face it's laughable some of his better roles were in the late years like he was quite good in that small role he had in donnie darko yeah um you know he's, and he, again he's likable in roadhouse but he's not the best actor it's it's more about the film he's in and the plot uh, you know and the other actors around him really and, and he's and he's easy on the eye for the ladies and the men as well so you know it, it is what it is but yeah i know what you mean um he figures out that cats can see him though can't he yeah yeah, yeah. Ew, they don't like him um he also has to witness and this is a bit of a nightmare this because he has to watch his best mate Carl come round to con- console and Molly and try to slip his sausage in her casserole and then he tries to yeah mm. it's a bit cheeky and, and but, but even a... Patrick's race he starts to cock block him a little bit doesn't he he tries to he gets the cat does, does he do something with the cat oh, he, he, does, no, he, he does that not... he does that to Willie that's right he tries to knock something over and he manages to like flip something and and they realize oh it's a picture of him actually so carl's like oh, i better go actually but he does like a cheeky thing where he pours coffee down himself when she's not looking and says oh i've, sp- I've spilled coffee that old chestnut Can we've, you... we've all been like, oh, there before haven't we all oh, i'm take... going to take off my trousers take your shirt off then come on um demi moore is so beautiful in this film uh, she's apparently still, she's when she still was, a very attractive lady if you see her now when she was cast the director was like yep 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 get you in this film you're like you know the new hot like you said commodity get her on the scene and then she showed up on the first day of filming she'd had all her hair cut off <laughs> and the director was like what the fuck <laughs> this isn't what we're going for. but was then that, was that knew. because she was doing that G.I. Jane movie was it G.I. Jane I think that came after this oh, probably much after, actually, yeah. yeah no she just decided I don't know why she did she just decided to cut her hair off but it really suits her. Uh, it looks really different. But she's so pretty. It really it doesn't really matter, does it? Really? Um, yeah. So she. So there. I think that's another reason why this this film does well because it's got something for everybody in it. Really, looks wise. You know, you've got Demi and you've got Patrick to look at there. And you got Whoopi if you need that. And you got Whoopi as well. Apparently, there were some nude pictures of Whoopi Goldberg doing the rounds. Uh, yeah, there's this joke in The Simpsons about that, and uh, they tried to bury them, and they keep jumping back out the the hole. <laughs> not sure i might check those out no i'm joking would i no yeah no yes you get um, it you know you are <laughs> so um yeah sam sam cannot touch things so he needs to figure out a way that he can touch things now while all this is going on um we we get to meet oda may brown because this is Whoopi Goldberg's character. She is a fraud. She is a psychic. She's pretending to be a psychic. Everyone in her family has been psychics, but she just doesn't have the gift. So instead, she uses lots of special effects and knocking sounds and a cupboard that's got like a fake door in the background and her sisters help her out. Um, and she basically tricks people because there's like a scene where she's like, so let me guess, it was your mum that died. And he's like, no, it's my dad. Oh, okay. So your dad, and his name is John. No, it wasn't John. Uh, Bob? No, it wasn't Bob. Uh, no, it wasn't. Uh, Daryl. Yeah, Daryl. Yes, it was Daryl. I knew it was Daryl. And she's just uh, done this whole really terrible fake psychic thing where she's trying to give them message. She's just ripping people off, basically, um, which is great. And she's very good at it. And she won an Oscar. So that's cool. Um, she does actually, though, hear Patrick Swayze, doesn't she? Yes, which is quite funny. Because he's like, oh, come on. This, this she's is quite like, amusing scene. She's like, who said that? <laughs> like, yeah. That's quite funny. And he's like, can you hear me? She's like, oh, she freaks out, doesn't she? As you would, you know. So he's like, great, I've got one person that I can talk to. Um, yeah. So he makes her, in the end, he makes her ring Molly, <laughs> which isn't a good idea because she's ringing up this woman saying, hey, I know your husband died a few weeks ago. Just to let you know, he's a ghost he's next to me I can't see him but he wanted me to give you a message Demi but, Moore but it's because he won't let he, he, she's like I'm not going to do that and he says okay I'll just sing until you do and he just starts singing king and I am the king I'm and Henry I. the eighth I am Henry the eighth I am I am he just drives her insane and um, she's like alright and he keeps playing this ploy to her as blackmailer as we go through the film yeah um he he finds out that Willie Lopez was hired to kill him. Uh, and he also sees that Willie Lopez enters their apartment when Demi Moore's upstairs getting changed and he's spying on Demi Moore. Um, 
and this is where he gets the cat to scare her. So, because he knows that cats can see him and Whoopi Goldberg can hear him and he did once move something, he comes across an old man who is a ghost in the, the underwear in the subway and he's very gnarly old man isn't he um mm. he's the reason my parents turned the film off for me he so it's too scary for you no um so we sat through the movie up until this point so my cousins and my auntie came over i remember god it was 1990 so i was 12 so it was probably 91 i was probably about 13 and they came over and they said oh we've got this new movie uh you know, let's watch this. It's um, Ghost. And we'd all heard about it, so we put it on. And we sat through the sex scene. You know, that's fine. Fucking hell. I was embarrassed, so mortified. I was 13, <laughs> do you know what I mean? It was all going on for me at 13. You know what it's like as a 13-year-old boy. So I'm watching this sex scene with a cushion over my my area, you know. And then uh, we get a bit further into the film and a bit further into the film. And then as soon as the man says fuck you on the in the underground my dad stands up turns up and says well we won't have any language like that i think you guys better go to bed now and i thought what and i had to go to bed not knowing how it turned out and then the next day they were like yeah you can watch the rest of it we checked out the rest of the film it's suitable for you i thought you stopped it you let me watch the sex scene what is it a 12 this movie uh i think it it was a, I think it was a 15. Oh, it could be a 15, well, actually. Yeah. Oh, actually, it was a 12, yeah, because Batman was the first 12 in the UK. Um, that was 1989. So it was a 12? Yeah, I think it was a 12 when it first so came out. So you were old enough to watch this, but you were told yeah, not to watch it. Yeah, but my dad just didn't want me to hear the word fuck for some reason. Well, you'd already heard it at that point. It's not going to change the word. <laughs> I know. So anyway, he, he eventually gets this old, cantankerous old ghost to train him. So we get a bit of a training montage now, don't we, where he's... He's trying to flick um, like a bottle cap and he figures out you have to channel all of your rage, all of your love, all of your passion. It's very cheesy, but if you can do it, you can move the object. Um, that's basically how you become a bit of a, almost a poltergeist. Yeah. Plot develops a bit further. We find out that it was actually dun 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 Carl that hired Willy Lopez because Carl has been Patrick looking at Yeah, he follows him because uh, he says that we've got a demi's like there's this person can you go check it out wherever and he's like okay fine goes check out the place and because he's it's been channeled through Whoopi that we know of this address goes there and Patrick Swayze is saying oh, well be careful be careful he knocks on the door and, there's, and there's, they, we get a little twist all of a sudden they go oh, alright how you doing and he walks in it's like dun 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 they're in cahoots with each other yeah it's pretty crazy and to this day the character the guy that plays um, Carl whose name is uh Tony Goldwyn. To this day, people still shout at him in the street because obviously he's such a git. Even though Willie Lopez is the one that killed him, because he's the one behind the whole like plot, people still hate him to this day. <laughs> Apparently, so the poor weird. guy, the poor guy's walking down the road like 30, 40 years after the film, and people are like, "You are responsible for Patrick Swayze." Oh, <laughs> <That's so laughs> it's not weird. really. It is, it is weird. People, people, people are strange. People are very strange. Yes, so... Um, At this point, whoopi has got loads of ghosts talking to her. She is getting pissed off because they're all coming to visit her now. It's, it, whatever's happened, Swayze's opened up the channel for her to actually listen to the dead. And this point, when he goes back to ask her some questions, he realises he learns a new skill because there's an old man in the room and he jumps into Whoopi's body and possesses her and uh, talks briefly to his wife. Uh, it's very good. Good scene with Whoopi Goldberg getting to like put on a different voice and act like an old man. It's quite cool. And he realises he can possess Whoopi Goldberg, so that's I know, great. So, so you've got Swayze and Whoopi. I reckon that should be a new team-up TV show. Obviously, Swayze's dead nowadays, but Swayze and Whoopi together again. What, what's a Swayze in Whoopi. Oh, Swayze in Whoopi. There we go. That's what it's called. Um, great, so... He Maybe that's said, the photos you've seen. Maybe it is. Oh, God. Patrick Swayze doing Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> I want to see these photos. <laughs> I don't. I do. Um, now, Patrick Swayze has a plan, and that plan is I'm going to fuck Carl over, and I'm going to sort out all this money that he's been laundering. Because this guy, he obviously owes this money to somebody, and he's arranged... I don't know what the sum is, but it's millions to be moved um, into an account by a certain time. So he gets Whoopi Goldberg to go to the bank 
pretend to be somebody else. And this is a really funny scene. This is a scene I talked about with this great chemistry because she's been fed what to say by by Patrick Swayze. Obviously, no one can see him because he's a ghost. And it's really funny. He's, he's trying to get her to like, she draw the money out. She's very nervous. Then she sees Molly at the bank and she has to run away quickly. Then he makes her give the check to a nun. <laughs> and she does not want to let go of the check, does she? Because it's a check yeah. of like two million or something. Um, and it's funny that there's nuns because she obviously, Whoopi Goldberg famously went on to play um, a nun in Sister Act 1 and 2. I was just uh, thinking of nuns on the run, spectacles, testicles, wallet and watch. That's another good nun film. I watched a nun exploitation movie the other night called uh, Nude Nuns with Big Guns. Have you seen that? No, but I've seen the title, that's for sure. It is fucking terrible. Like, like really fuck it. Like, actually worse than um, Three From Hell. It's worse than Three From Hell. <laughs> it's fucking terrible. But yes, there we go. So, what's happening? Where are we at? Money, check, to the nuns. She doesn't want to do that. We get a great scene now. So we're almost at the end of it, you know, where Carl's at the office and he's sweating and he's trying to get the money transferred, but the money isn't in the account. And now Carl, uh, Sam uses his um, new skills. He shoves chairs around and he starts typing murderer on the screen. He types, and then Carl says, who is it? And he says, Sam, Sam, Sam. And he types Sam a bunch of times on the screen. So Carl goes to to molly now because he he just straight up believes i'm being haunted by my friend who i fucked over like there's proof like that name t- got typed in you know there was no internet back then so that name getting typed in by those keys and those chairs being thrown around the room must be the ghost of my buddy who I, i've messed up indeed so he goes and visits molly and now this is quite a tense scene because obviously he can't really touch um uh them and sort of help them out so He's sort of watching this happen, and Molly doesn't know that Carl is a baddie. Oh, it's quite tense. It's done really well. Uh, he, he tries to push Carl around a bit. Um, there's a great scene with Willie Lopez, where he goes to haunt Willie, and ends up he just gets killed, doesn't he? He gets hit by a bus, Willie Lopez. Mm. And now this scene. Oh. It's when uh, hell comes up for him. Oh. So when a baddie dies in this this film, you get these shadow creatures, don't you, sort of come up and they make this sound. And the sound that they use is a baby crying, slowed down and played backwards. And that's how they make that sound. Oh, okay, cool. And it's like... It's just this terrifying sound. And it takes your ghostly spirit off to hell rather than obviously the nice place where Padgett Swayze will end up eventually. Yes, so we know that Carl is, is probably going to be going to hell at some point. Um, so Oda, May Brown, that's Whoopi, and and Sam, Patrick Swayze, they go to visit Molly. They prove to her once and for all by doing the penny trick that he is there, he is a ghost. And, he... and, and then Swayze slips into Whoopi again. Oh, and now this is a very strange scene where we get a lesbian possession dance kiss um yeah that's all uh, i don't know how else i can describe it really but basically he possesses Whoopi. they kind of get close to each other i don't think they actually like full-on kiss kiss but they do get very close and they dance and she believes that it's definitely sam in there it's very strange scene but it is what it is do you know what i mean yep it is what it is uh so he gives her a penny to prove you know that she's definitely um he's definitely there you know in spirit righteous brother song plays and then it's interrupted because carl arrives and carl's got a gun and then the trouble is sam found out earlier when you possess someone you become so weak you can't do anything for a few minutes after of course so he can't do anything to stop carl from trying to shoot Whoopi goldberg and demi moore uh he pulls a gun to molly's head and starts shouting sam i know you're there you need to leave you need to help me get that money i'm gonna get killed da, da, da. and uh sam manages to push him about a bit he falls into a window the window smashes and this giant slice of glass slashes down into his stomach and he's dead and taken away by bad cgi ghosts <laughs> making horrible sounds you sound like it, if I, it, Ace Ventura then <laughs> alrighty then alrighty um, then uh, yeah the shadows arrive they take him away 
Then Molly, because heaven starts opening now, <laughs> this is the cheesiest bit, and Molly can hear Sam's voice, and then she can see him. And this is the bit that Patrick Swayze said he channeled, thinking about his dead dad, because uh, he starts crying, she starts crying. They manage to have a very ghostly spectral kiss. And then Whoopi Goldberg, it's really sad, actually. Say what you will. Whoopi Goldberg looks around and she says, Sam, they're waiting for you. And she points. And you see, like, heaven behind him. All these, like, you can't see who they are, but there's loads of, like, figures stood in the white background behind him. And um, I don't know, maybe, oh, I don't know, maybe it's just where I am at the moment, life at the moment. But that, that kind of, like, got to me a bit. And I had a little tear. And then she says, he says, I love you. And she says, ditto. So it's kind of like the other way around. And then he walks off <laughs> into heaven and the credits roll and we all dry our eyes. Yeah, I didn't cry. Uh, I thought it was a cheese fan at the didn't. end there. I was just fucking hell, let's get this movie done. Um, <laughs> some of the action sequences in this, I heard it with some chasing to stuff. The music score is the most lazy writing I've ever heard. And it's just like, what the fuck? Try and make this a bit more action filled. Um, yeah, that, that's the film. You talked about yeah. it. I listened. Uh, yeah, I did. And you, but you watched it. Thank you for watching it with me. And yeah, at least you can appreciate right. it's a well-made movie. It is. Yeah, like I said. Yeah. Um, I think. Do you I give it a thumbs up? I give it a thumbs up, and I do think it stands the test of time. It's a movie that was made in 1990. You know, the, the, the 80s had just ended, but it was still kind of the 80s. If, if you um, know what this movie is, you know what you're getting into. I will recommend it if you know what you're getting into and you're bored and you've got nothing else to do. I'll recommend it. That's it. That's the only way I can recommend it. It was the highest gross of film of 1990. It was the most rented VHS of 1991. That doesn't make the film any better. It doesn't, but you know, these I remember, are all facts. I remember saying to my friend once how much I disliked ABBA. And he said, yeah, but they've sold so many albums. And it's like, that doesn't change the fact that I, as an individual, should not like likes, should like or not like something because of the sales stuff. But anyway. <laughs> it won two Oscars, like I said. Whoopi Goldberg won an yeah. Oscar. It's a well-made film. It's like the performances are fine, apart from that. Oh, going to get filled with all... Apart from that stuff, uh, it's all pretty good. It's a well-made film. CI is a little sketchy nowadays. The score's a little sketchy here and there. It's it's all right. Um, I mean, we chose it because it is... You chose it. <laughs> because it's our Valentine special, and you can't get much more romantic than Patrick Swayze and Demi Moore with a lump of clay. Sarah did actually suggest for next year, why don't we do The Loved Ones? The Loved Ones? Oh, yeah, that sounds good. Let's do that. Have you never seen The Loved Ones? Oh, I've seen it. I love okay, it. Okay, cool. Yeah, the Australian film. Yeah. yeah um, really okay, well, that's that. Well, you're not going to give it a thumbs up then, not at all. Oh, I'll give it a thumbs up if if you if if you are if you know what you're getting into with it, I'll okay. go. You can watch it, but so if you're that, feeling no. cheesy and you've got nothing else to watch in this day and age of the internet, this that's really unlikely. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know if I can recommend it then. It is on Netflix UK if anybody wants to rewatch it. And if you've never seen it, you should probably check it out because. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say 50 50 on here, guys. This is uh, Dan saying yay, and I'm thinking I'm going with May. Did you notice the sex scene was mainly just the camera focusing on Patrick Swayze's abs? No, was, I didn't was really like pay attention to the sex scene. I was, I was tr- cringing too much, laughing at my daughter. You but, and me are going to watch that scene with you. And That's speaking of that, we should go into that review of that now. Yeah, let's let's she have a little listen to what she says. Okay, and then we after this we're going to break and we'll be back with some time team, I presume. We will indeed. We All will right, indeed. we'll be back. Uh, have a little listen to this, and you know you can laugh away. Hello, Jay. It's been a long time since Hi. you've uh, since you've been on the show. Hi. Just uh, we just watched Ghost. What did you think of Ghost? What could strange awkwardly strange is that the clay scene <laughs> yeah shush <laughs> that was horrible we, we don't talk about that <laughs> oh yeah the clay scene did you like the movie was it yes or no <laughs> no <laughs> I mean, it's a kind of kind of a good storyline. It was very, very predictable. Very predictable. No twist like the Sixth Sense or anything oh, like that. Oh God, no. No. The Sixth Sense had me shook up. 
You saw my face after it. You 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 took a picture. I was just like, <laughs> well, it's late. <coughs> There. Say good, say goodbye to the peeps. You know what we always do. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Whoa! What's this machine? This is my time machine. Your right? time machine? Yeah. For the next five minutes, we are gonna be the time team. The time team. Whoa! What's this? Look at that! Look at that! Oh, he's been dead a hundred years. Look at that! That's the Statue of Liberty coming out of the sand. Oh, there's a dinosaur! Oh my god, look at that! It's something else. <laughs> Here we are. Here we are. 1986. I mean, 1986. Whoa. Set in 1986. Set six. Because I've got Valentine's on the brain. I was thinking of sex then. Here we are, Gab. So we are approaching. <laughs> I, I, thank the... you. I figured that, but yes. <laughs> We are approaching the the other, you know, the later part of the eighties now. I know, and look at look around us. Look at where we are. There's shell suits and hype. Uh, is that global oh, hype color? Oh no, I think we're too early for global hype color. It's getting very neon though around There's here. There's some white bright. Reebok trainers and stuff like that. You know, no, there were quite a lot of disasters going on this year. What worldwide? Yeah, so Chernobyl exploded this year. Yeah, that's pretty full on. That's not good, is it? No. So we're still feeling that now, all these years later. Um, also, the bloody Space Shuttle Challenger exploded live on TV. Yeah, crazy shit. You ever watched? No, I, I haven't that actually. No, I haven't. School. No, I haven't. I didn't see it. I've watched I've since watched it on YouTube. You imagine you watch that though and just been oh, whoa! It's kind of like if uh, now I guess it had been the same as um, when you watched the two towers and yeah it was like that really twin towers or i was thinking lord of the rings or reason twin towers it was the two towers no, it was twin <laughs> towers um uh that just uh, like the how that was when that happened live that was just like whoa my god yeah and uh britain was struck down with mad cow disease oh yes i remember this old mad cow disease thing yes. yeah so um, lots of mother-in-law jokes came out around that time, I believe. Oh, I expect they did. I didn't know that at the time because I'm not that age, but yes, that would. Yeah. So there was a few things going on. Also, Oprah Winfrey, uh, she debuted on television with her talk show. That's okay. quite interesting. Yeah. And if you're uh, an England fan, as in the uh, the football team, you would have been absolutely gutted this year because it was Mexico 86. And we were doing so well. We were close to the uh, winning the World Cup. Uh, but unfortunately, Maradona? Maradona handballed it. I actually uh, remember that was the only time I sort of watched football then until like hmm, a few World Cups away. I started watching it again on World Cup uh, uh, each every four years. But I remember that one. And that was, I remember everyone just being like, what the hell? Yep. Yeah. And they went on. Argentina went on to win the, the World Cup because mm. of that. Mm. Ah, Maradona, he loves drugs, doesn't he? I don't know. Yeah, he loves he loves the cocaine. So, uh, films and music. Now it's a brilliant because we're in 1986. You know that's one of the best years. So let's talk about what was in the charts at the moment first of all. So um, in the charts you had Pet Shop Boys, you had Boy George and Culture Club, Prince, Madonna, Christa Berg, The Bangles, Genesis, Whitney Houston, Simply Red, The Police, Van Halen, Lionel Richie, all of these guys out. Bruce Springsteen. But the charts were absolutely on fire. It was fantastic. Cinema screens were also fun. You had Top Gun, which weirdly is getting a sequel this year. Um, yes. Crocodile I, Dundee. I only saw Top Gun for the first time two years ago. Really? Yes, and I, I, my feelings were exactly how I thought it was going to like when it came out when I was 10. You don't strike me as a Tom Cruise fan anyway, really. Uh, some films of his, actually, I don't mind. Collateral. I like the Mission Impossible movies. Yeah, Collateral Damage. Uh, was it no, Collateral, wasn't it? Um, yeah. yeah, there's a couple of films here, so I don't mind. Um, yeah, Top Gun. Crocodile Dundee came out in 1986. That's no Again, knife. That's, that's a knife. That's getting a meta sequel this year as well. Oh, my God. Have you seen the trailer? It's called... Um, oh, what's it called? The Fantastic Mr. Dundee or something like that. And it's basically Paul Hogan plays Paul Hogan... And he's hanging out with John Cleese, who plays John Cleese, and Chevy Chase, who plays Chevy Chase. And they're trying to reignite the whole Crocodile Dundee character. And it just what? looks fucking terrible. Oh, my God. It looks so fucking terrible. We should probably review it, just because it could be horror. Honestly, it looks so bad. It looks so bad. Um, Platoon came out this year as well. 
brilliant film. Uh, talking to Tom Cruise, we also had um, The Color of Money came out this year. So he was, you know, he was had a couple of movies out this year. And uh, poor old Tom Hanks, who's uh, got the coronavirus at the moment, he, he was out with The Money Pit this year as well. Yeah, good movie. We had a couple of sequels, The Karate Kid Part 2 and Star Trek Part 4, where they go and get the whales. You know, where they bring the whales back. Um, so that's what was kind of going on. Not much else in uh, society. We're here to talk horror, though, Gav, aren't we? And what's going on? Horror movies. Well, 1986, we got a sequel to a very, very cool, very, very creepy science fiction movie. Aliens ah, came out yes. this year. Mm. And it was full-on action, horror, sci-fi we covered it. We love it. It's brilliant. Scorny Weaver. It's got everything. It's brilliant. You like that one, don't you? I do indeed. You do. I think you like the next one as well. We covered this one as well. The do, Fly. Do you remember I said I was going to do a porn? If I did a porno name, Hor- uh, Sir Horny Beaver. Oh my god. Do you like it? It sounds like a rap name, like a rap porn star. Sir Horny Beaver. Sir Horny Beaver. Ah, uh, get it now. Uh. I understand. God, I was a bit slow with that one. Mm. The Fly came out this year with uh, Mr. Um, Goldberg. Goldberg? Uh, Goldberg? I think they're going to be making a remake of The Fly. Oh, God. Really? I think it's uh, to do with Blumhouse. Mind you, The Fly itself is a remake. So, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, uh, as usual, we had another Friday the 13th sequel come out this year. We've covered this one, actually. Part 6, Jason Lives. One every single year. Yeah, it's incredible, isn't it? It's a good year, though, because also we got a very unusual film in that it was probably one of the first sort of horror comedies I really became aware of, and that was Night of the Creeps. Um, and it was such a fun film, and it's become a real cult movie now, hasn't it, Night of the Creeps? Yeah, good movie. We should probably cover that at some point. It's really good fun. And Yeah, we should. Um, skim over a couple of other ones Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer I was never a fan of that but that did drop in 1986 probably quite ahead of its time um, in some ways Demons 2 not as good as the original but it's not too bad either so that's not too bad we've got Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2 coming out this year mm-hmm. I, I actually really like that you like that one? Uh, yeah it's, it's a very interesting movie compared to the first one but yeah yeah, because it changed the changed the franchise into like a basically a silly slasher, didn't it? Mm. Um, the next two movies are very, in my opinion, overrated. I know a lot of people really like them, but that's Chopping Mall and Spookies. I don't really, I, I want to really love them both, but I just never. Uh, I watched just... Chopping Mall really for the first time uh, within the last few months with Sarah actually, and uh, I I thought I was like, oh, I can't believe I've never really seen it. So I actually had it on VHS and I never watched it, and I watched it and um, I was just a bit like, oh, I'm disappointed actually. This is not what I thought it was going to be better than this actually. Yeah, it wasn't as great. I really. think people who uh, love it are probably like it's sentimental. We um we also got Critters one come out this year, Gav, which I know we've covered, and I know you love the Critters movies so much. Big fan, big fan over here. Yep. Uh, we also had a movie come out with um, uh, what's her name? I can't remember her name. Hang on a minute, Grace Jones. Uh, Vamp. yeah. I like Vamp. great movie. Great. Which movie, I always Vamp. thought was Mel Gibson. As a what? kid, I always thought it was Mel Gibson as the main kid in it. Oh, right. I, I thought you meant that there's a female vampire. Mel Gibson is dragging it up. No, Mel Gibson, wow. the, the main main kid in it. Oh, he does look a bit like him, actually. He yeah, now you say well that. looks well like Mel Gibson. I thought it was oh. Mel Gibson. As a kid, I thought it was Mel Gibson. That's quite, yeah. Because I had no reason to not try it. never looked at the credits because I was, you know, whatever. But yeah, Mel Gibson, definitely. Another underrated movie which came out in 1986, which I absolutely love, and we covered this a long time ago, and that's Trick or Treat. Mm-hmm. Uh, really good uh, rock and roll horror movie. Um, we also got a couple of slashes. We got April Fool's Day come out this year, Psycho 3, uh, Slaughter High, the first troll movie, Maximum Overdrive, which you saw for the first time recently, didn't you, Gav? Yeah. Uh, no, uh, it wasn't the first time, but I watched it, rewatched it recently. Um, yes, cocaine fueled maximum overdrive. And probably the last one I'd mention, well, actually, a couple, uh, Rawhead Rex. 
Um, and Poltergeist 2. I'm a big fan of Poltergeist 2. I kind of prefer it a bit to the first one in some ways. Yeah, I do it's like that creepy old movie. guy. Yeah. yeah, what does he sing? He sings about God something. God is about... in his heart. Oh, God. It's horrible. Like that, yeah. And that's his oh, last and, movie before he died, I think. And Rutger Hur came out with um, The Hitcher as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. cool film. Yep. Um, that's kind of it for your horror movie. So, a very extensive list when it comes to groundbreaking horror movies for 1986 i would say you might want to watch the fly aliens and night of the creeps yeah but you had a few a good old mix we are approaching the late 80s now though, so it's going to be interesting to see it is because that what you said then with that the okay films but they were not like some of the earlier 80s years no, just been no. like, oh my god oh my god what'd you choose oh my god well, I think then, the problem is now is we are starting to get into sequel territory really strongly now, aren't we? You know, we're on the sixth night, um, Friday the Thirteenth movie now, yeah. and we are starting to see. You know, they're getting desperate. Poltergeist two, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two, Demons two. Studios are seeing monies to be made. Let's do. Let's repeat. Let's repeat. Let's repeat. And that's still going on now, unfortunately. I, I was about to say that's when they started doing it, and now they're still doing it. And well, they even realize, worse now. Let's, is let's, that, let's not think of how good it's going to be. Let's think of how much money we can make from it. And then go oh okay well even worse now is that they're not even just doing sequels they're just remaking films um yeah you know and we get films like hostel uh, not hostel sorry um cabin fever which was remade felt like only a couple of years after the first one and i don't really understand why we're remaking films so close to the original it's very very strange but uh hey i'm not in charge of hollywood if i was i would be very very rich you would indeed i would indeed so there we go, Gav. That's 1986. What did you think of that? It's all right. I was expecting better, to be honest. Um, I'm hoping we're going to have a better time next year. Well, I I think you look really good in your shell suit. Thank you. I've been trying it. I don't know if pink and black goes, but it kind of makes me look cool and gangster. You, you look like you could do some cool break dancing in that outfit. Exactly. You look good in your dungarees. Thanks, dude. You know, what's trying the, to keep what's it real. the hole at the back for? Um. Whoops. Let's get out of here. Okay. Uh, there we go, 1986. Let's head back to 2020. Ready? Ooh. Don't you know that it's worth every treasure on earth to be young at heart? Some people will go to any length to stay young forever. Is that someone? It's Madeline Ashton. Oh, she was a big star in the 60s. I thought she was dead. Oh, madam. You look younger every day. Thank you, Rose. But Madeline Ashton and her old friend, Helen Sharp. I've lost men to her before. Mad Hill. Are about to go <laughs> too far. A touch of magic. Drink that potion and you'll never grow even one day older. Bottoms up. No warning. Now a warning? more. They think I'm dead. You are. But you're not. Are you telling me it doesn't hurt when I do <laughs> this? It doesn't hurt. She's dead! She's dead, Ernest. Now he's dead. He's dead? Oh, Ernest oh, is oh, dead? Oh, Everybody's oh, dead! You pushed me down the stairs. Oh, I'm so sweaty. I don't think it's sweat, honey. I think you're defrosting. Universal Pictures presents Meryl Streep Bruce Willis It's a miracle! And Gordy Hawn Look at me! I'm soaking wet! Death becomes her I just have to make a telephone call So, Death Becomes Her 1992 Directed by Robert Zemeckis when a woman learns of an immortal treatment, sorry, I'll start that again. <laughs> when a woman learns of an immortality treatment, she sees it as a way to outdo her longtime rival. Mm. Very short and sweet. Um, starring Meryl Streep, 
Bruce Willis and Goldie Hawn. And like I said, it's directed by Robert Zemeckis. And this was supposed to be like a... was going to be a kind of spiritual follow-on to a, for a Tales from the Crypt movie. Yes, I read that as well. Um, I don't think it's horror enough, though. I like the, no. the story itself, and the, no, not even metaphors, the obvious blatant story of in like immortality and uh, oneself, um, especially in the female view from back in the day. I think nowadays it's very not so much, obviously, but um, looking at beauty and plastic cosmetic surgery and change that. It's almost uh, you could you could say this could have been a Cronenberg film. Definitely. It's got some body horror elements in it. Absolutely. Um, and that was quite an interesting side of it. Unfortunately, I have no zero interest in that. The whole plastic surgery, cosmetic, making a change and look at yourself. But it is a very valid and interesting plot point, storyline, etc, etc. Yeah, and, and the whole sort of beauty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and like India Jones and the, like, you know, finding that the Holy Grail, like finding that thing which will keep you from never aging. It's an interesting concept. Definitely, definitely. Um, we got It's got a great score on this movie as well, a very sort of classic sounding score. Um, yeah, who was, a, who was composing it? I think I'll probably put it down somewhere, actually. Yeah, actually, you'll probably... I'll just have a quick look. It, it was... Um, it's a it's a fairly one of the big ones. Was it what like James Horn or somebody like that? Uh, I will find that in a moment. Okay, you got Dean Cundy on d- director of photography on this. You know who Dean Cundy is, don't you? Yeah, that name pops up in a lot of horror movies. He comes out a lot of movies. He's filmed a lot of films, but he filmed The Thing. He filmed a lot ah, of John Carpenter's it. movies. He filmed Halloween. Yeah, uh, he's um, when you see his name, he's one of those names you think, oh, okay, that's good. Good that you're involved in this. Now I know off the bat you're not a big fan of this movie, are you, Gavin? Yeah, it's just it's it's again it's like Ghost. There's nothing wrong with the movie. It's a well-made film. Um, <clears throat> zero interest in the uh, the uh, the story. I wouldn't choose this as a film I'd watch. But that that's just you know that's me. So I'm not going to use that as a way to taint my thoughts and reviews on the film um but no you like this film yeah so this is kind of one of those ones that became a bone family favorite when we were younger for a while uh it had that right blend of horror and comedy it was family horror so it's kind of a bit like beetlejuice you know it's there's only so much they could do however it was groundbreaking at the time because the cgi used was it never been used quite like this before you had the abyss you had Terminator 2, and in fact, this movie were the, the sort of three three groundbreaking ones that came out around that time. This movie shows a lot of like um, damage to bodies, heads being snapped and turned round, and holes the, through torsos. The directors and, are much a, very much a fan of uh, pushing effects and stuff like that. Anyway, um, I thought you could say it's groundbreaking because Bruce Willis has hair, but I suppose he it's had also that. groundbreaking for that. It's also groundbreaking that <laughs> Bruce Willis is fucking hilarious in this film and if you take anything from this film it's that Bruce Willis plays this really quiet bullied it, it, character it's it's nice though because you, you kind of forget Bruce Willis you almost nowadays put him in a Jason Statham type box and you think when you get a movie you just get Bruce Willis like you just get Jason Statham but earlier on in his career when he was a little bit more hungry you could see his acting chops and you could see like he could be these different characters and he plays this very well Totally. Um, this film won an Oscar for Best Special Effects as well. So we've got a couple of Oscar winners that we're reviewing today. Yeah. Uh, this and Ghost. That was the only Oscar it won. It won a few other awards here and there. But yeah, Bruce Willis, very, very funny in this. And in fact, I've got to be honest with you, I'm a massive Goldie Hawn fan. Um, I fell in love with her when I was younger, sort of watching films like um, Overboard. And obviously she's married to the incredible Kurt Russell. Um, Do you know so... once when they went together on his birthday, she sent him strippers? Did she? Hmm. Oh, she is just the best, isn't she? Hmm. <laughs> we also get Meryl Streep in this. I, d- I did say to Sarah, would you do that for me? She said, yes, I would. I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. Well, uh, Meryl Streep hadn't done a, a lot of comedy, um, so it was interesting for her to do a, a, a role like this, especially with all that involved some... Um, CGI and stuff that had not really been done before for a bit of green screen and some animatronics and stuff like that. Um, yeah, it went up against Alien 3 and Batman Returns for um, in the Oscars and it ended up beating them both. 
uh, for best special what? effects. Uh, yeah, I was going to say in the effects department. Yeah, hmm. it's interesting. Yeah, Alien Three and Batman Returns wouldn't have won any any other Oscars, would they? Let's be honest. <clears throat> so um, in this, Bruce Willis is a famous plastic surgeon who happens to be with a fairly beautiful wife, as in Meryl Streep, and. Oh no 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 he's not he's he's got a girlfriend isn't it with Goldie Horn but he yes. then meets her is it her sister he's well they're, they're Madeline's friends, a, it? it's just friends is it yeah so um Meryl so yes Meryl Streep's a very famous or she's not as famous as she used to be actress she's doing Broadway etc Goldie Helen she is a very very frumpy um woman who is yes she's with Bruce Willis and. They go to visit her backstage, Meryl Streep, and go and see how she's getting on. And, uh, yeah, I don't know how he's become such a famous plastic surgeon. I guess he just works on loads of Hollywood stars, I guess. I don't know. Um, don't know. Don't know. But Goldie Hawn is very jealous because she says, all my life, she always steals my man. I don't want you to meet her. And he's like, honey, it's fine. I'm not going to – nothing's going to happen. He meets her backstage, and dun, 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 seven years later – they're married. So Meryl Streep did indeed steal Bruce Willis. Yeah. Um, and Goldie Hawn is wearing a fat suit. She is a big fatty now. She is. Um, she's actually become a crazy cat lady because <laughs> she's got loads of cats. She sits in front of the TV, slagging off Meryl Streep on TV uh, on her films. So they, they take her away in a white coat, so to speak, don't they? They actually do. They take her off. It's great effects I put here for 1992 as well. The fat suit and the, the makeup and everything. You can tell it's Goldie Hawn, but it's done so well. I mean, obviously this this would have been perfected on things like bloody Nutty Professor and stuff like that. But but back then I'd not really seen a fat suit before, so I remember thinking, how have they done this? It's brilliant. Pretty good effects. Yeah, they take her off and they lock her up in a mental institution because hmm. she's a crazy fat cat lady. I know it's not fair, is it? It's a bit much. Now Bruce Willis has. A very strained do with you, his. Do you know? Just a sidebar there. Do you know um, why sometimes people do go a bit crazy in the old idea of the cat, crazy cat lady comes from? Where? Uh, the the cat shit. There's something in the cat shit itself, and if there's too much cat shit, it has something in the air or whatever, and breathe in. It does actually uh, fuck with your brain. I thought you were going to say it goes back to the witches, sort of. Um... No, 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 no. It's the chemicals in the cat shit. And if there's too much cat shit around, feces. I've got a story about cat shit, but I'm not going to actually tell it. I've decided I've done it. I love the fact you're thinking that to yourself. So you're like, no, no, not going to do it. No. Oh, do you know what? I'm going to share it. Yay! I, share it. I love it when you do that. Go I share on. a lot of stories with, with you and with our listeners. Mm-hmm. My sister's going to hate me for this. So me and my sister used to play a game <laughs> when we were very young. Oh, God. This can go and- so many ways. The game was, if the cat had pooed in the garden, who, <laughs> who could get the, their nose closest to the turd without heaving? Oh, my God. And that was the, the game. That's what we did. So, uh, uh, but who, but you, who's, nobody's a winner, really, are they? No one's a real winner, no. no. And we were, what was worrying as well is that we were both concerned. It transpires years later. What we were both actually more worried about is that with the other one, while you were close to it, would whack the back of your head. And push you into it. But none, neither of us were going to do that. That's but, my first thought was like, I'll fully push you in it. No, but I just remember trying to get, like, you couldn't get more than about three inches and then you'd be like... <laughs> And you'd have to stop. I don't know what did, the prize was. Did your mum ever come out was... and think, what are you guys up to in the garden? Why are you it's, retching it's, so much? We're smell, smelling cat poo, mum. See how close we get to <laughs> cat poo, mum. She's thinking, haven't they got enough bloody toys? I've, I've given them everything. And, and they're they're play with cat catch poo. At least it costs nothing and it always keeps being made. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Thanks how for telling us. How did we us. get on to this? Uh, Basic oh, cat t- ladies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. God, that was one of our best tangents, I think. <laughs> okay, now. Um, okay, so, uh, yes. She's so been Meryl... taken away. She's in a mental home, and uh, Bruce is with Meryl Streep. But he is a shell of a man, isn't he? Yeah, what's the score of that? Then? He is drinking all hours of the day. He, they, don't, they seem to have the worst relationship ever. He works very, very hard 
um, he's moved on now. He's not just a plastic surgeon. He also touches up, and that sounds really wrong. I was going to say he touches up dead bodies. No, I think that sounds brilliant. But he does. He does touch up their bodies. He basically um, prepares bodies, uh, makes them like, especially famous people that have been in terrible accidents. He makes them look good. In fact, I think at one point there's a man who died shagging, and he's got a big smile on his face because he was having sex. So he's got to try and fix that, isn't that? It's going to be a good way to go, isn't it? In the middle of sex. Yeah. You wouldn't know whether you were uh, coming or or going. going. (laughs) You'd certainly get a stiffy. Yeah. Have you seen that? Uh, you would have done that amazing episode of uh, Always Sunny in Philadelphia where Danny DeVito wants to show the kid, kiddie, kiddies that he's not a kiddie diddler. Uh, the children's pageant he puts on, and he gets his friend from the mort- uh, mortician to um, oh. the mortician to do his face up, and he looks like he a dead looks, person. He looks terrible. Doesn't he looks he? like a, well, he looks like a dead person, not like really <laughs> badly made up. It's fucking amazing. I love the way he just shows up on stage with this and starts t- looking at that, saying to people, "I don't diddle kids." And they're like, but look at you. <laughs> I love it. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. Yeah, it's fantastic, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. So it transpires that Meryl Streep and Bruce Willis are, they are married, but they're very, very unhappy. In fact, Meryl Streep is cheating on With a younger Bruce guy who, who, it's so funny. This movie is about vanity and the fact that she goes to this younger guy and he's with another woman now. And he says, look, they're all laughing about me, laughing at me about being with you, being seen with you. So you should get with someone else. You're an old woman. And just tell her, and there's something that you can't, it's like all the millionaires, everything in the world, money can't do anything. You can't buy time. You can't buy your age back. And it's very interesting. This is a theme of this film. Well, it's Meryl Streep that's mainly obsessed with plastic surgery and looks, isn't it, um, to begin with. And she goes to, now Goldie Hawn has written a book um, I can't remember what the book's about now, but it's like a, you know, a, a life coaching sort of book. And they go to visit her and she has lost all the way, and Goldie Hawn is looking absolutely phenomenal. I've never and found she's... Goldie Hawn an attractive woman in the slightest. Do you do you look at her as so like a really attractive woman? What the fuck did you just say to me? I've don't I've never ever looked at her an attractive woman. I I uh, do you do then? Is that is that a common thing then? Because I, I just I just always wondered you. why she's always. A little bit put like that in like way suggesting some things. I assumed it as people thought that, but I just don't. How dare I, can't, you? I can't see it. How dare you? It's not. Apologise to Kurt Russell immediately. No, he can do what he wants to his penis. I, I just, <laughs> I, you know. Well, anyway, she looks fantastic in this. You, so uh, you've yes, always I, found I, her I, very attractive, have you? Hundred percent. Really? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There's a scene in Overboard where she's wearing a very, very revealing bikini. She could be naked, and I wouldn't really care. I, don't I was, attractive. I was quite young. I was probably, I don't know, twelve. And she bends over at one point to pick something up, and Kurt Russell sees that she's got a birthmark on her butt, and that comes into the plot in, in Overboard later on. Yeah, and yeah. I just remember thinking, "Oh, I've got a funny feeling." I don't know what that is. Oh, okay. There we go. And that was about Kurt Russell. So he just told us a little story about you first time getting an erection. It wasn't the first time. Okay. That was when I was sniffing the cat poo. Now, um, she, yes, so she's lost all the weight and Meryl Streep's like, how did she do it? What's her secret? I don't know what it is. Well, we're going to find out her secret in a bit, aren't we? Mm. Yes. Um, so it's a lot of it's good writing this film let's talk about the film itself first of all it's good writing it's good jokes it is well made it's not to Gav's taste perhaps because it's a bit more I wouldn't say it was pointed more at women uh, but it's more definitely more of a family audience isn't it this thing no but I think uh, a woman's possibly going to relate to it more than a man I think much like Ghost this is a mum movie isn't it mums are going to love this I imagine this movie for yeah, between 30s and 40s women when it came out I thought they they probably loved it it's probably fair. a good date movie in fact yeah yeah yeah. it's, got, know, it's oh, got jokes and stuff yeah Bruce Willis is in it Meryl Meryl Streep and Goldie Horn. good so, effects Goldie Horn starts trying to manipulate both of them to play off each other because she's, she's going to get Bruce Willis away from her, her but she doesn't really care about him when, when it comes down to it it's, it's basically her it's revenge, revenge. She wants, she, yeah she wants to get revenge. Bruce back yeah um 
So there we go. So Meryl, as we talked about earlier, she found out she's being cheated on, even though she's doing the cheating as well. So she decides, I'm going to go. So she's had a, a clinic recommended to her. So she's going to go to this clinic and see what's going on. Um, so she arrives at this clinic and there's very strange, hunky men uh, in this in this mansion. And they're sort of wandering around. There's Doberman dogs everywhere. And we meet this very attractive, semi-naked strange lady called Lyle I think her name is um, she's basically naked and she talks about beauty she talks about aging and she basically sort of reveals you know there's this ancient I think it's like an Egyptian liquid isn't it that you can drink that will that will help you to remain beautiful forever now while this is going on we are splicing this scene with Goldie Horn seducing Bruce Willis because she's gone round there and she's sort of putting on a show oh I'm all wet my car broke down can you help me uh, and they're having he's being um, seduced by Mrs. Kurt Russell herself while, that, while all this is going on so a little bit of this a little bit of that so we I'm lost at where we're at now oh the price the price of the um, liquid. She says, you wouldn't be able to afford it, which Meryl Streep's like, hang on a minute, do you know who I am? She says, look, the price is extortionate. I can't tell anybody. You can't tell anybody about this if you take you, it. you, you got to think, it can't be a high value of money because Goldie Horn did it and she was in this mental institute or whatever, so like, well, she wouldn't have had a true, lot of actually. money. So I think it becomes down to, you never see it here price. I think it's... I don't know if it's the person itself or what, but I think it's ah, something... It's actually... I think it's probably the next sentence, because she says to her, when you do it, you can only hang out in the public eye for 10 more years, and then you've got to vanish. That's the price. So you get 10 years of being famous and 10 years of being successful, then you've got to fake your own death or just vanish from the public eye. Otherwise, people will notice that you're not ageing. That's what the price is. Okay. Well, that'd be All good, right. though. You could do that, though, because that'd be quite nice. Be like, yep, yeah, I've done that. That's right. That's yeah. There's, there's a good scene here where she so she takes a little bit, but doesn't she? Hmm. She drinks a bit just to see what it looks like, and she sees her skin get a bit firmer. No, they pour they put a bit on her hand because her hand was cut. Oh, that's right. She cuts her hand with the. She does this to a lot of women, actually. She's cutting and I think yeah, she does it to Goldie Hawn. It shows well. her hand looks better. Um, at this point, also, so she does take it and stuff. Anyway, at this point, Goldie's seducing Bruce now, and um, this is for me. This is forty-five minutes into the movie because I'd start to lose interest. Forty-five minutes in, I did get more interest here because they now plot to murder her. So that's that's where that's my interest comes into it because there's murder. Now this bit here, funny enough, in my notes I've written here. Gab would like this bit because this bit it feels yeah. very a bit like Clue almost. You've yeah. got a silly, you know, they're trying to they're trying to commit a crime. It's a bit silly, a little bit some comedy in there. Um, they basically want to to get her to. They want to put her in a car and shove her over the cliff, don't they? Make out that she's dead, Meryl Streep. Mm. They want to they want to stage make her stage her and death. They, they do plan all this, but then it all goes wrong when Bruce accidentally kind of lets her slip down the stairs. Well, she pushes him and pushes him and pushes him to the point that he starts throttling her. <laughs> yeah. And then lets go, but too late. She's already she down the stairs. Her her heel, uh, above the back of her heel just misses the last top step and she, boom, she goes. And breaks her and neck. She's dead. And they think she's dead. So Bruce they, rings up Goldie, like, it's great that she's dead. And she's like, right, okay. She's right, very. We need to get this right. We need to get the plot worked out. What happened? What are you doing? Do blah blah blah. And she turns up, but then um, before she turns up, what happens? Well, while he's on the phone to her, we get that classic Michael Myers. Yeah, just sitting up in the background. Sits up, yeah, yeah, yeah. But of course, her head is on the wrong way round, and this is brilliant, brilliantly done. She's, it's quite like if you can imagine what it must be like to have your head on the wrong way round and trying to walk in a straight line. It's quite really well done and she's sort of saying things like you pushed me down the stairs I can't believe you've done this and it takes her a little bit of a time to figure out that her head's on the wrong way around and then she's like I can see my ass and he's like uh, I've never seen it before maybe it's a dislocated neck <laughs> and yeah. uh, she's like is that a thing and he's like uh, maybe <laughs> so he takes her to the hospital and they're like you got no pulse <laughs> You're dead. And the doctor's, the doctor's like, let me check check this out. Oh, my God, there's a giant bone sticking out of your neck here. And the doctor's freaking out. He has a little bit of his hip flask. 
yeah no heartbeat you're clinically dead so he goes off he goes outside to speak to the doctor bruce willis and while he's off they just assume well she's dead let's take her to the morgue so he has to break her out of the morgue he takes her home and all the while goldie horn is spying on this and i think at this point she probably thinks he's a necrophiliac because he's stolen his dead wife's body and br- brought it home with him she doesn't know that she's st- still actually alive because he's amazing at touching up corpses oh like jimmy oh. savile oh my god fucking hell so because he's amazing, he manages to fix her. He Because she puts her own head on the right way around, doesn't she? Yeah. She lifts it up. It's a bit like a, a cartoon, like um, who, who Framed Roger Rabbit. It's that kind of effect. She lifts it up and turns it around. But then he does all her makeup, makes her look semi-normal, really. Um, but Goldie discovers what's going on here. She, and she's like, how is it? How are you alive? What is this? You've taken the same potion as me, you bitch. And they have a little bit of back and forth. Meryl just grabs a shotgun yeah point point blank shoots blasts. into a little water fountain display yeah she blasts her through the stomach um bruce is caught in the middle of this so you basically got these two zombie women kind of fighting each other the, the whole looks incredible doesn't it yeah they are zombies they are they're, they're zombies they've yeah. taken this potion it basically it must kill you instantly no no because they die don't they they've both been killed do you think that's what it is? Yeah, they've had the potion which could give them life, but like you're gonna like both die, but it's like yep, you're still gonna lie, live. So, yeah. I think they're not dead. I think they're just immortal and nothing can kill them. Okay. That's the way I see it. But they are kind of zombies, essentially, as well. Yeah, so it transpires they both took the, the potion, they have a bit of a dust up with a shovel. Meryl's head uh, gets knocked off and backwards, doesn't it? Floating nuns at a morgue. When are there morgues? There's some floating nuns. Do you, do you see that bit? Floating nuns at a morgue. Hmm. It's one of my notes. Were you watching a different film? Don't know, but that film sounds pretty fucking cool. <laughs> the floating nuns at the morgue. Yeah, I'd watch that. Okay. More backwards and forwards. They eventually make up and they... They basically, poor old Bruce, he's so hard done by in this film. They basically say to him... Yeah, he can't win really, can he? But he shouldn't have he shouldn't have tried to go for the better side where the grass is green anyway, really, should he? He, he shouldn't have really. Ray was. Well, he's now basically caught in between a rock and a hard place. He's got to basically make them both up constantly and keep them looking normal. And they actually want him to take the potion so that he can be an immortal... Um, uh, plastic surgeon which is pretty weird um, he doesn't want to do it no. he doesn't want to do it at all because they make up they make friends of each other the ladies do don't they they're both like well oh, fuck it let's get him to make us up and then they're like what we could do when he dies maybe we need to get him to take the potion because we need him to make us look better, good for the rest of our lives so they smash him over the head and they take him to the mansion where the lady with the potion lives and it's a brilliant seeing this because we find out this is where all the dead celebrities are. So you've got um, yeah, it's James almost Dean. like a it's almost like a bit of a cult thing going on here, isn't it? Or like yeah, just this real sort of dark thing. All these dead celebrities are just all here because, because they've had to come out of the limelight after ten years. Well, she sort of talks to them all and, and says, you know, guys, can, welcome everybody. You know, it's been great. This club's going really well. Um, can I remind you of the rules, though? Um, particularly you, Elvis. We told you to stay at the public eye. And he's like, hey, what are going to say? And uh, he's obviously appearing in the public eye here and there. You get to see James Dean a bit later on, um, Jim Morrison, and there's a few other celebrities. Um, I think Andy Warhol, a couple of people just pop up here and there. Um doing that now would be fun because you could like cgi and loads of like dead celebrities couldn't you yeah yeah it'd just be an easy excuse just to put everybody who especially any conspiracies or anything just put it all in the same place you could probably do like a twist on that now as a new movie in fact yeah a twist on this have, idea yeah, yeah you could have like an old bloom house is probably listening an elderly bruce lee just sort of turns up imagine that that'd be cool yeah well yeah 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 totally so he refuses to take the potion and he runs off through the mansion um and basically he's chased by doberman up onto a roof it's very frankenstein the end of this movie in fact there's a few frankenstein 
uh, genre, uh, homages throughout this. But at the end, we get lightning on the rooftop. Um, he falls and he's hanging by his braces. And the girls are like, drink the potion, drink the potion. And he's like... He doesn't take it. I don't want to drink the potion. And he falls through some glass into a swimming pool. Jim Morrison says, hey, man, are you going to be much longer? I want to get in the pool with these girls because that's what Jim Morrison would do um, he runs outside Bruce Willis and he steals James Dean's car James Dean sort of just looks over his shoulder like James Dean always does and drives off and it says 37 years later yeah and it's his funeral and we find out he's gone on to lead a long and healthy life he's had six children <laughs> he adopted many more um, sounds like Brad Pitt <laughs> pretty much and he's yeah he did loads of charity work and had a really really good life and everyone at the funeral was sort of really sad but happy that you know he left a good life but then we hear some laughing coming from the back of the church yeah and, two hooded and ladies two ladies with I wonder who they everything. could be it's Meryl Streep and Cody Horn yeah. and they're laughing and they're sort of taking the piss and they realise that they're causing a bit too much of a commotion so they get up and they they walk out and as they walk out, they start arguing about makeup and paint that they're using on their skin. And one of the, you see their faces just underneath the veils, and they don't look great. You know, you can tell they're kind of rotting a bit. But then they have a bit of a scuffle, yeah. fall down the steps, and they smash into a million pieces each. Indeed. And their heads sort of spin around. And at the very last thing Goldie Horn says is, I don't suppose you remembered where you parked the car, did you? Yeah. And that is the end of this movie, which I probably haven't sold it very well, but it's more about the effects, really. And that's why Meryl Streep didn't like making it, because she said it felt like they were pointing more, they were aiming more at the effects than they were the story and everything else. But, um. No, no, no not really. But they need the effects, good though, don't you? But then again, that was a long. That was before she probably realised what they could achieve. Yeah. Nowadays, you'd know. You need to take a while doing these things. You have effects supervisors. Similar to, to Bill Murray with Ghostbusters 2. He, he didn't like it, but mainly because there were so many effects in it. But hey, it is what it is. Um, the movie was almost called... So Bruce Willis, at one point, because he's Bruce Willis, he said, look, I'm really happy making this film, but I think we need to change the title. And they said, oh, here we go. Go on then, Bruce, what's your idea for the title? He said, it's death, baby. Was it a Mike Myers movie? And they said, no, we're going to keep calling it Death Becomes Her. Piss off. Um, yes, Robert Zemeckis won an Oscar a few month, a few years before with uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit. And it's funny that I mentioned, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. you can kind of tell, it's got that kind of Warner Brothers cartoon comedy vibe to it, hasn't it? Absolutely. What was it that you weren't, what what didn't do it for you then, Gav, in this movie? I don't find the story interesting. <clears throat> no? I like Bruce Willis. Um, I don't... Uh, Goldie Horn and Meryl Streep. And, um, yeah, there's just no interest in the story. That's it. I, the subject matters. I don't... It's interesting that you say um, it was base, It was going to be a, a TV episode. Mm. Um, because it probably like would have worked... Movie. Yeah, it would have worked better probably. It it does feel, although I'm a big fan of it and really still, and I still laughed at it, you know, and it brought back some good memories of watching it when I was younger. It does feel a bit stretched, doesn't it? it there is, yeah, it's there's twi- a bit of a sag in the middle. Of it, I was bored. I was a little bit bored towards the end. At one point, I went, oh, I'm totally bored of this again now. Um, yeah. but it's a good good movie to showcase Goldie Hawn and Meryl Streep's comedy. It's particularly Bruce Willis's comedy. It's got some great special effects in it. Hmm. I, know, actually, I, know, I know there's a lot of fans of this movie. As on our podcast page, there's on, uh, on Facebook, uh, quite a few people mentioned it. A lot of people said, oh, no, I really like that film. Um, I'm going to give it a thumbs down um, okay. because I don't personally like it. But that's not, again, the film's very well made. So, you know, if you're into that sort of thing, you think you'd be into it, then yeah, watch away. Um, the the idea behind it is interesting. The whole like of, and the philosophy of life and never growing old and uh, well, you can you tap t- into touched... vampires and and other horror icons. Yeah, yeah. So. you touched on that earlier, and um, I do think that um, it's probably got some relevance now towards vanity and the way women are perceived. 
um, you know, and looks and trying to like, and, and everyone's striving to have that, live that Instagram life. So yeah, you're right, it has got some relevance now. Yeah. You'd like to think that people would rise up and just grow old naturally and gracefully. Um, like us. And not have to get things pulled and that, you know. But uh, yeah, like, uh, like us. Um, old, but you know, um, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't think I can get thumbs up. So it's both movies I haven't given, really given a thumbs up, and you have, which is interesting. You would, I don't think we've done that before. But I think you would probably watch Ghost. That's the one that you would say is your favourite out of the two. <laughs> Favourites pushing it. Uh, one I'd, I'd watch over the other one, yes. I think the problem is with Death Becomes Her, it's in that murky area of family horror, and they always stray into comedy. Um, there's movies like Beetlejuice and this and a couple of other ones. I think when it comes to family horror, we know that The Burbs is probably our favourite. You know, that's that got it exactly right. This one felt like they couldn't quite settle on where they were going with it because it was very funny at times, but it wasn't very, very funny. Yeah. And there was a few scary moments, but not very, very scary. Uh, I don't know. I still give it a thumbs up and I still really like Death Becomes a... Oh, good. I'm glad. Um, I'm glad I will take review. Sarah's suggestion for next Valentine's Day. And yeah, loved ones. and I said maybe we could pair it with Serbian film, and she said probably not. And yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd agree with Sarah on that one. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Okay, well that's Death Becomes Her, or it's Death, baby. If you're Bruce Willis, not not a great title. Well, I thought Bruce. it was more like a um, Austin Powers movie. Oh, well, like, it's death, baby! It's death, baby! Yeah. Yeah, do I make you dead, baby? Yeah, I thought the other day I was going to possibly do David Bowie impressions for the whole podcast, but now I thought that wouldn't be funny. Why would you do that? Da- I'm David Bowie. Really bad ones. Why would you do that? I don't know. It popped up in my head the other day. I'm David Bowie, and today we're going to listen no, you to... No, you're like, you turned into Michael uh... King now. <laughs> I know, it's so close, isn't it? You've literally just turned into Michael King. Hello. That's Michael King. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Michael. Uh, our impressions are just terrible, aren't they? I love the fact that we do shit impressions. Yeah. It just makes it worthwhile. It's all its all thanks to Nicolas Cage, I like to think. Hi. It's all because of that Wicker Man episode. The bees! The bees! Hi! 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 The bees! Hello. <laughs> that movie is so outrageous. I was watching watching um, the other day, like five minutes behind the scenes on it, and they were like, why does he punch so many women in this movie? Yeah. Like, I, he beats up so many women in that movie, doesn't he? Nicolas Cage. What a dude. Just, I've got to go and see Colour Out of Space, man. Yeah, Sarah said it's very good. She went to see it. Uh, there's, like, there's like a few screenings in England. It's just like, oh, for fuck's sake. Indeed. Uh, Kate, uh, who did the hair on Beyond, which I'll talk about Beyond actually in a little bit. Uh, Kate uh, did hair. She went to watch the movie where Richard Stanley was there and she got to meet him. Oh. The director, Richard Stanley. Um, yeah, uh, I'll talk about Beyond in the outro. Um, right, so that's that movie. Can yeah, we, well, we, I think. Um, we do a was. Yeah, let's get Bill. Bill? Bill? Are you uh, ready to. Uh, Bill? Bill? Hi, welcome back to World of the Strange. Cool. Spooky goes World on. of the Strange. strange. Valentines. It's strange Valentines. Oh, our hearts go out to those who didn't get their Valentines cards through the door. I didn't get one. I didn't get one. Oh, no, of course I did. What am I saying? I'm going to get a slap, though. That's what I'm going to get. Oh! Ew. Well, if you're lucky. Yay! No, I, I did. Anyway. I got uh, I got a one, which is... Um, so, I got me one, and it's um, Fimi Jiggy from um, Misery on the front. Kathy uh, Bates. And I can't remember now the caption. But, yeah, it's, it's that. It's how much she loves me. She's been, like, you know, knock, I got knock my out first, the older... When I got mine from Alice, Angles. it said... Uh, our first Valentine's is husband and wife from Alice. That was very nice. <laughs> And hers was bloody late because I ordered it from Etsy and it didn't arrive. Um, and then I messaged the woman and she said, well, I did post it. And I said, yeah, that's all very well, but I haven't received it. And then she sent me a screenshot of the tracker. And I was like, yeah, but I haven't fucking received it. I'm not, why would I want to get a second card out of you? So eventually she sent me a second card for free. It's really <laughs> annoying. But there we go. So here we are, World of the Strange. Strange. So strange. Now, 
There is a there's a family I'm going to talk to you about from Brazil. Okay. What are they doing? Well, there's 14 of them. Wow. That's quite good because um. That Valentine's means there's Day. lots of love making. Yeah, but they don't make love with each other. No, I mean, but 14 times their parents did love make love. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Well, well, I'm just saying. Carry on. Right. So this family of 14, they've all they all share something, a special trait, um, and they all have. Dicks. You ready for this? Dicks. Every single one of them has six fingers and six toes on each hand and foot. Craziness. And I will be posting this story up in the, on the Facebook page, don't worry, at a later date. But yes, yeah, a family of 14 of them, all born with six fingers and six toes, and they've recently welcomed another member to their clan. Have they got their own sign language using the six fingers as well? Do you reckon? Maybe. Yeah, it could be. Because you could put like, how would you? You could put two middle fingers up at once, almost. Yeah, just do your own little. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. There's two thing, two middle fingers up at you. So this family are from Brazil, and they they say they have used over the years. They've all used their extra digits to their advantage. Oh, I thought so. Yeah. And they say that their abnormality makes them stand out from the crowd. I love the way you're like, oh yeah, I would have thought so, yeah. Oh yeah, if you've got six digits, that's, I'm actually thinking how good this is. I don't think in any, any way it can be bad. So I'd be like, oh my God, you got six fingers. Yeah, like, that's insane. All right, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. so hold, hold that thought and, uh, and I'm going to oh, ask okay. you. I'm going to ask you what you think you could do better with six fingers and I'll ask you this like, when uh, we get to I the could, I could ask Sarah as well. Whoa! Right. <laughs> Careful now. Careful. I, used, I had to use my dad voice on you then. But so, you said it. So the new dad yeah. is delighted when his son was born with 12 fingers and 12 toes. He said, brilliant, this is great. He said, this is a mark that no other family has. Some of these are direct quotes. However, his wife only has five. So there was a 50-50 chance that his little boy would get the six fingers and six toes. But luckily he did. He's very pleased about that. And they're all very pleased. They're known as the family of six in their town in Brazil. Right. Everyone calls it the family of six. Um, so, uh, when they... Oh, hang on. What was the bit I was at? I was going to read you what they do with their six fingers. Oh, yeah. So, first of all, it's it's a thing called polydactyl. Being born with an extra digit. And usually, if you're born with one, you're born with... On one hand, you're born with an extra one on the other hand. And quite often on the feet as well. And this actually happens one in 1,000 births. It's actually quite common. Oh, okay. Isn't that strange? I've, I've, never, never, I've met... never met... Yeah, I've never met someone with uh, that. I've, I've, got, I've got on both my feet, I've got um, webbed toes. Oh, yeah, I forgot both about feet. your beard. Next to my feet. big toe, the next two toes on are both webbed on both feet. Oh, I forgot about that. What do you mean, oh, I forgot about that? Not, not, not right. Keep your webbing to yourself. Okay bit weird um okay yes yeah, so um if your mum or your dad have got six fingers or six toes you have got a 50 50 chance of getting it just like this family but this is crazy because all 14 of them have got you know uh, 12 and 12 i mean how do they get shoes to fit <laughs> don't know how do they get gloves they must have to oh, gloves how do you you have to get mittens wouldn't you yeah have to get in. Yeah, so the you family just, of six, you just cut out the side of the glove and just have one little finger sticking out. It's a bit like a cool thing. The family of six have said that they love having this many digits because it makes them better musicians, better goalkeepers, and many, many other things that they are better at. They've used it to their advantage, Gav. You wait. You're trying to lure me into a trap of saying something sexual, aren't you? Seven-year-old Guillermo says. The coolest thing about having six fingers is being able to hold lots of things at once. <laughs> yeah. His cousin Maria says, well, the best thing for me is that I can play more keys on the piano. Yeah. And their other uh, cousin, Joawa, says, hey, in goal, I'm one of the best goalkeepers in our town because I'm able to reach some of the balls that people can't. For me, it's <laughs> easier to hold the ball as well. I've got a bigger grip. My hand covers more of the ball. So it's difficult for the ball to escape me. I can imagine them picking up the line. Get Freak Boy over there to be in goal. <laughs> Freak Boy. <laughs> Giant, multi Do they have to get their uh, special shoes made? 
Well, they must have to because they're gonna have more toes. There's pictures of it all on here as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, very strange. There's lots of pictures of them playing pianos as well. Um, and the and grandfather. It, and come on, sexually, it's got a, in, it's got a help. So well, the grandfather. Just before we get into that, uh, he is a composer and became quite a famous composer because of, you know, because he was able to play more keys. So there we go. Just wanted to mention this family, really. And now we can talk about what you would do with Six Fingers. I'm not saying what I would do with Six Fingers. I'm saying sexually, it, 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 you know, it's going to be, it's going to aid. Isn't it crazy? Because you, you, obviously you can move it like you move your other fingers. So yeah. But there like, must be a reason why we've evolved into having five fingers. Well, we, Wonder what that well, is. Well, the, the the way why the reason why we are the way we are the only way the only thing that's happening now in the evolution of the human being now is the heads are getting larger. Um, I don't think the brains ever even get larger. But I think the heads are getting slightly larger. Um, what? I think I think I think that's I think it's our heads are getting bigger. I think slightly. Yeah. Ooh. I might be wrong. I could be completely wrong. But the reason why we've only sort of we haven't we've we haven't started still sprouting wings and, and evolving even further because we get to the point where we don't need to so the thumb and the four digits is all that is really is required an extra finger isn't I guess uh, required yeah I suppose. it's just through you got to go back to the beginning really though haven't you and Hang on a minute. the evolution just... process science with Gav no okay <laughs> Not science with Gav. Science, bitches, with Gav. That's better. <laughs> oh, brilliant. No, Put no, I mean, I mean no, no, I, no, I can't. I, um, I, I can't do that. But it, you do need to go back to the evolution of when things came out and at what point it would have stopped to the point where you don't need any more because it just would not be required. Everything you can do, you can you can make a fist, with, which is a perfect size, with your hands into Ooh, your fist. I wonder what they'd be like as boxers, this family, because they'd have much bigger hands. Well, you'd have an extra finger there, so you'd have an extra impact. Ooh. I guess a bit more spatial impact to it. But like, or they'd, imagine taking a slap from them across the face. Yeah. With an extra finger. Whoosh, oh. But as I'm saying, sexually, it probably helps as well. Like, it's, it's not really going to be a bad thing. It's probably going to be like, oh, play. I mean, play it, it is our Valentine's no episode, Gav. Exactly. So I'm could, trying to make it, I'm trying to keep it sexy. So could you elaborate on what you mean? Well... No, I'm not going. Okay. Because I'll get. I'll have to, have to go really start getting into crudeness, and we're not that. We're just innuendos and jokes. It's in your endo. Oh, in your joke. Who's gonna? You're gonna choke me, Daddy? What? I do. <laughs> <sighs> I think maybe we should leave it there then. Yeah, you. You're going off on a bad one. Uh, okay, that's is that. So that's the world of strange. It is. It's a. It's a not a horrific world of strange. It's if anything. A nice world of strings. I'm happy that they have a family that they all share a special bond. Well, they Apart seem from like mum. a very, very happy family, and uh, I will be posting this up onto the Facebook page soon, so you guys can all look at the pictures of them with their giant hands. They had 14 kids, so you can tell mum was probably like, so Barry, what can you do? Like, this is the dad, obviously. Barry, what, what can you do with those six fingers? Oh. I'll show you, Sharon. And um, that's why they had 14 kids, probably. So they're a Brazilian family, and they're called Barry and Sharon. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. Baz and Shaz. Bill, take us out of here. Bill, get Bill, me please. away from Baz and Shaz, a six-fingered freak family. <laughs> don't call them that. <laughs> I don't mean... <laughs> Bill! <laughs> I don't mean freaks. I'm so... I apologise. I did not mean that. Oh, <laughs> shit. But, Bill! That's all the time we've got for this week on World of Strange. Next week, though... Give me Ira. Careless pets. Weird. And we're back again. There we go. That was episode eighty-six. And I don't think they're a freak family at all. Just, just, <laughs> just to reiterate that. Um, that was our Valentine twenty twenty episode, uh, much later than we anticipated. But yeah, I hope go. everybody enjoyed that. Um, I do want to say very quickly. Um, I, I now have, after a long process, I now have all of Beyond with me. Um, the, the short film um, it's not finished though because we had issues with uh, Ed who shot it was going to colour it and there's a massive issues with computer systems and compatibility and etc and boring shit I'm not going to speak about And uh, but I've got it all now and I, I'm going to on Monday should be able to colour it all and hopefully have the film finished 
fan fucking tastic. Fucking, I I looked at when I first wrote the score a year ago. Bloody hell! I know. Has it been a year? No, I wrote the music before we shot it because I was trying to speed up the process. I was like, right, I'll score it now before it was filmed. Ah, uh, okay, okay, that makes more sense. Yeah, yeah, because I knew, I knew. I remember what... you sending me little snippets of the music. Um, yes. And you were so excited. It was almost like you were. It's almost like you were. You were making a film to go with your score. Which I suppose you were in some ways. I, I didn't Tarantino, right? Tarantino's always be like, he gets ideas and scenes in his head. He then goes to his music collection. So I did that myself. Uh, I've done that before where I kind of, I did it with all my films most of the time. Kind of write music quite often before I've actually filmed stuff um, and put it together. Then I've got scenes and I'm like, yeah, cool. And I just splice it in. I can see it in my head. It, it's kind of quite nice. I'm not letting the visuals do it, but I'm, I know what I'm going to film. So I just interpret it that into my head so I know what the music uh, theme is. It's quite interesting when I watched The Joker a few months ago or a few weeks ago and they, one of the techniques that the director did was play some of the music on the set to get the actors in the mood as well. So almost like they were doing their scene to the music. Yeah. Which I don't I don't know if that would work all the time, but... It, it, it depends because you can't... It's going to be one of those things. You can't do a scene 40 times or something like that and play the same music over and over. It will lose impact very oh, quickly. So yeah. it must have been at a certain point. Maybe there's enough rehearsals there to go right. It was only one or two scenes, I think. But, yeah, it's um, probably like when he dances down the steps. Did you like the movie? You were, I, been very quiet about it. And you don't have I not talked you, about it? No, and don't <clears> say you didn't like it. Oh, um, so I thought it was overhyped. Mm-hmm. I liked it definitely. Mm. Um, I thought, I thought he was brilliant in it. I thought he was fantastic. I didn't like the way they took the character in some ways. I didn't like the whole. I'm not going to spoil it because anyone hasn't seen it. But I didn't like the Thomas Wayne stuff. Um, I did like the, what, the new things they brought into the character, though. I loved the laugh and the reason for the laugh, and I loved yeah. his. It felt like a very organic way that the Joker would become a very big gangster, like crime lord. That that felt so. I actually I loved the way they did it. So I, as much as I didn't like some of the changes to the character, I equally liked some of the new changes to the character. Okay. But overall, I really enjoyed the film. Good. And I think for me, overall, what it did was it really opened up a very big and much needed discussion about mental health and how we look after people with mental health in society. Yeah. Um, the scene where he goes, and it's no spoiler, where he goes to his therapist and she says, we're yeah, closing. There's no, there's no medical. I mean, there's what no do medication. I do about my medication? Well, tough. Um, yeah. And Incredible. obviously, if you've got a healthcare system where you have to pay for it uh, and you don't have money to pay for it, then that's an issue. He was fantastic in it, though, and um, it was good. One of the best turns from Robert De Niro in a while. He very yeah. subtle. Um, you he know, played it no... well. He, he underplayed that, and it just came out quite nice. That's what worked. He wasn't Crichton from Red Dwarf. Fucking hell. <laughs> that, shit, that shit blew me away when she said that. Like, no, don't do that. You've totally ruined this movie. It's like crying, argh, kicking people. Um, but overall, I like Joker. I don't think it's in any way overhyped because I the, I had a, a big uh, cinematic impact on me emotionally as I watched that film and came out and I thought about it for a few days. So for me, I think it was duly hyped. I be honest with you, I thought about it for days and days and days after as well, and I was eager to talk to anyone who had talk, seen it. <clears throat> uh, and yeah, I it's because you got the bandwagon so late, that's why. I know, but that happens sometimes. Yeah, shit um, moves too quick now. Yeah, if you're not on it, then no, everyone's forgotten about it after two weeks. Yeah. You know, everyone now is like, Bat- joke, what's Joker? Oh yeah, that movie. It feels like fucking years ago now. Someone I know said that they were watching it with their boyfriend, and he didn't realise it was based on the Joker. They just thought it was just movie because it, a- it well yeah it comes across quite like a, just a crime movie with some guy who's going to go a bit crazy. You could yeah yeah violence. Was How good, did he though, not know it's it's called fucking Joker? I know I know the violence was good. I can um, see I know. can see where the guy's coming from. Though. It's good. Yeah, yeah, it's I good like film. the fact that it's a very subjective ending as well. And again, without spoiling it, you know, you can interpret a lot of things about the movie yeah. as you will. Indeed. But there we go. Yeah, uh, overall loved it. <clears throat> good. Right. You, what's going on in the next couple of episodes? Because we've decided to do a little bit of a mix. Uh... Yeah. So we're still going to do our next episode. We are bringing Kate Pollock on um, to. And we've now discussed, to... haven't we, Kate? We have now had a conversation and we <laughs> know, now know each other's voices and us as human beings. So. 
uh, we can converse cinematically for the podcast next time. So this is an episode that should have definitely come out, and we are a bit behind. But but March is sorry, February is um, Women in Horror Month, and we wanted to drop this in February, but we didn't. But it's going to be late, but whatever. So we are doing um, Suspiria 2018, not 19, Kate, uh, and The Descent, two two very women centric horror movies. Um, Kate's going to come on; she's going to chat feminism, women in film. Nothing too heavy, but it'd be really good to have uh, a lady on the, on the show. Uh, I know Sarah joined us for a talk on spiders, but it'd be good to have a woman's point of view on some of the, the you know, we can pick uh, Kate's brains on like the women's point of view in horror, the final girl, yeah. all these kind of things, really. There's lots of stuff. We'll probably just be like asking her loads of questions. And she'll be like, what are you on about? But, um, uh, and she did fun. say to me, oh, am I just going to be on the movie, uh, just the films? I was like, no, 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 we get on the whole episode, yeah, do everything. we'll try I, and get her on as much I, of the episode as we can. I said the intro would be like, uh, probably a lot more of Dan and I, but then we'd slip into her in a, in a bit. Oh, God, <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hilarious. She's going to love gonna it. Like You're going to be like this. For River, yeah, 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 yeah. Right, uh, well, I'm not going to stop in you in no jokes, am I? I'll tell you what. If I do, because there's a woman on Kate, the show, then that's me being sexist. So no. Kate will give as good as she gets, I tell you that's, what. She, uh, that's what I want, though. She is very quick with it. Um, so that's episode 87. Yep. Um, we are going to get, we are really going to push the next few episodes through because we want to try and catch back up. We are going to switch things around. You say just, that, but we will, we will try. Well, unless another bad thing happens. Mm. But, yes. um, we are then going to switch things up a bit because of the current climate and by current climate I mean the coronavirus um, we haven't talked about that really but we are going to we are going to move one of our later episodes forward and we're going to cover 28 days later and 28 weeks later um, and I know it's probably in poor taste you might think but um, it's probably a good idea to talk about the coronavirus and you know, we can cover those two and movies. And talk about viruses, yeah. yeah so we can do a World of Strange and, uh, you know, we can sort of discuss it a bit. We're not going to do it in a scaremongering type of way. Um, yeah, and then I think after that, we might switch things up because I think quite a heavy episode. We're going to probably then cut to Creep Show 1 and 2 for the following episode, which will be a real fun, silly, nice episode. Yeah. So there we go. That's our next few episodes. But yeah, next one to focus on is um, episode 87, which will be our uh, fem, you know, not feminism, we keep saying that, but our women episode um, with Kate. So that'd be brilliant. Kate, Can't wait for that Kate, one. Kate does want to have words of you about these claims of her expertise <laughs> in feminism. And, uh, she, uh, but I'm not, I'm going to let her, I'm not going to plead her case for her. Episode. I'm going to let her discuss this with you and I'll just sit back and laugh at you both <laughs> talking away. So that's what's coming up. That's so what's coming up. Go. So happy Valentine's Day, Gavin. I love you very much. I hope you got my present that I sent you. Uh, yeah. I love the I love the uh, clay modelling we did at the beginning of the show. That's nice. I don't want people to know that we did oh, that. Oh, yeah, no, sorry. I'm not going to put that on the show. Recording. No, no, I wasn't recording. No, no. Okay, good. Good. So there we go. Anything else you want to say before we... Uh... Nope the credits nope. as it were nope. all right well I'll, I'll just do our usual bit of admin there um so as always um the podcast on Haunted Hill is a proud member of legion podcasts you can find us in many places now we are actually now on youtube uh, as well as spotify um our most active place that you'll find us is on our facebook page if you want to chat to us engage with us um the podcast on Haunted Hill on facebook you can also find us on legion podcast the legion uh, podcast.com is where you can find uh, links to our show as well as all the other shows that are in the network you can also find us on podknife.com the podbean app the podcast addict app itunes or whatever it's called now twitter uh, at haunted podcast we're also on instagram uh, it's the pod the haunt oh, i can never say that one the podcast on a haunted hill insta and we are part of Patreon, so if you'd like to help us out, you can do so by donating even just a pound a month, which leads me on to thank, as usual, our patrons, RJ McCready and Lemio. Well, thank you. Uh, thank you so much for supporting the show. And if you're in a position to help us, guys, every penny literally would help, um, just towards equipment and recording and stuff like that. It's all good. So there we go. That's where you can find us. I am um, thinking of also probably doing a t-shirt line um again really soon um Yay! start like a merch line again I'll, I'll just set up probably the same t-shirt design as four and just if anybody wants t-shirts because i i know i have the odd person that said to me oh i want my t-shirt so 
Yeah, we'll do that. And we, do, we buy them as cheap yeah. as we can, but they're normally like, a, like what is it like? It's about 10? twenty quid, you know. Is it? Oh shit. Okay. Yeah. It's it's so, very frustrating because we, we can't do it cheaper because it has to be like a run of ten or whatever. We can't yeah, it's unless really we can do like a run of a load and we slowly sell them ourselves. But you know. I mean, the issue is is that um, you have to have a certain amount of orders come in for the print to be made, don't you? It's a bit weird. Maybe we could maybe we could look at doing it a different way. I don't know. It might be yeah, a different way we good. can do There's it. Some t-shirts on the go for 2020. Yeah. Representing. All right. Cool. We get there we go. Yeah. Nice one. All right. Well, I'm going to um, shower all this muck off me after that Valentine's episode. It's a good night from Whoopi. It's a good night from <laughs> Whoopi Cushion. It's a good night from Patrick Swayze, quite literally. Yeah. Did you know that um, the phrase, uh, the hip hop phrase, I'm Swayze, is because of Patrick Swayze? No, I don't even know the phrase. So, hmm? the phrasey. I didn't know the phrasey. There we go. Because people um, used to say, I'm Ghost, and then they were like, I'm Swayze. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. okay. Uh, so, definitely a good night from Harvey Weinstein. Good night. God bless. Fuck off. Rot in hell. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, God. Just... Rot in hell. You in fuck big. Sweat. You what? Fuck pig. <laughs> it's a good note for the freaky six fingered freak family. <laughs> Don't call them that. <laughs> I did and I, I felt bad and I reclaimed my state sentence. <laughs> freaks. Finger freaks. <laughs> Get them on Harvey Weinstein, see what I could do with their fingers on him. Oh Christ. And it's a good night from uh, Bruce Willis with hair. Indeed. Indeed. So there we go. <laughs> Good night, Bruce Willis is here. And we love you all, listeners. Thanks for joining us again. We do. Uh, love I you. hope we don't, uh, um, you know, offend you in uh, the words we speak. And if we do, we meant to. And it's we do it out of love. And we do. And if you don't like it, then fuck off and listen to Psych House. <laughs> listen to him. <laughs> right. Take it easy, guys. We'll be back. See you guys. Bye. Be safe. Thank you for listening to the podcast on Haunted Hill. We will be back again real soon.